It is your PrisonPlanet.tv memberships that fund so much of what we do here in this operation. And then we're more than happy for the TV show after it's aired live, then be leaked out onto the web to tens of millions of people. That's our goal. Sitting here, as the music is playing out, wishing I had more time. Because I will uh, study the news at night, in the morning, and then print out all the stories with the crew and go over them. Stack them all up here in front of me, and it's the same warp, time warp that happens every day where I end up covering maybe 30-40% of it by the end of the show. And I've got, I've absolutely got to cover all of this today. I mean, there is just so much to cover. Now, we had Lindsey Williams on for an hour earlier in the week, and uh, I've never heard him just get to all the points and lay it all out. And, it's, and the things he was saying from his sources were clicking with what my sources were saying. Very revealing. So I thought we'd get him on to recap, cover a bunch of the stuff he didn't have time to get to, and then take like an hour of your phone calls today with Lindsey Williams, Alex Jones, and the InfoWars listeners. So uh, that is coming up about an hour and a half or so uh, with Lindsey Williams today, interspersed with uh, other uh, news. Hey, hey, here's a story. It's not our top story. It's just a joke. It's funny. Associated Press, crisis-ridden EU wins Nobel Peace Prize. EU set up by mega banks to destroy the sovereignty of EU countries on record. Uh, transferring trillions of dollars every few months to private mega banks, bragging that they've conquered Europe in the Financial Times and other places, and uh, they gave them a peace prize. Yeah, the EU, who has uh, gotten behind NATO and the attacks on Syria and Libya, uh, is just a criminal organization, a globalist organization, an anti-liberty, UN world government promoting group. It's the core of the world government, and they've been given a peace prize. Why not? Go all the way. You gave Obama one, a uh, bigger warmonger in many respects than George W. Bush, but it's okay because he's a liberal. He's a Democrat. And, um, well, he's got a peace prize. Why not give him another one? Hell, why not give him 50? Why not give him 1,000 peace prizes? They can just have an assembly line of them, and Obama can sit on a giant pyramid mountain of them and say, hey, he won 1 million peace prizes. He is the man of peace. They call the Antichrist. I'm not saying he's the Antichrist. It's a joke. Uh, but he's definitely of the Antichrist spirit, as they say. Okay. Wow. Whoa. Uh, we're going to go to break here in a minute. We have this little short segment. Because so many stations want to carry this segment instead of carrying establishment news. A lot of stations do carry it. But really, the official start of the show is when we come back uh, here in just a few minutes. And I am going to try to get into it all. But... I talked a little bit about Bill Maher yesterday saying we need more death and saying, hey, people that want abortions, people that promote abortion, it's really about reducing population and getting rid of bad people, ugly people, useless people. And I was really re-listening to that, and the story did go viral. And it just really came to me that, well, of course he's on the board of PETA. I happen to know the inside scoop on PETA. It was so shocking when I learned it. 13 years ago, when my wife was just my girlfriend, that I I told her, do not take this lucrative book deal, because they tracked her down and found out who she was. And, uh, and believe me, the amount of money they were offering was like 10 times the money we had in the bank. She was living with me. She just moved in. We were shacked up, as they say. But we got married. Big deal. Uh, the point is that um, it was so off the chart that even Mr. Conspiracy Theorist, Alex Jones, said, I believe you, but no one's going to believe this. And then later, just as off her talking to publishers, that info was tracked by uh, private investigators and all the weird stuff about PETA came out. And, 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 and see, it all fits in. So you know what? I think today I'm going to really expose these people. It, it needs to be done. 
And then we're going to get into, uh, well, the big news is straight ahead on Syria, the economy, the debate, you name it. Thank you for joining us. It is Friday, the 12th day of October 2012. And we've got Lindsey Williams joining us again today with his insider sources on what's coming up in the Middle East, the economy, uh, the designed implosion of the dollar, uh, and more to take your phone calls. He's coming on to take your phone calls today. That's coming up in the next hour. That should be uh, always extremely informative. Okay, uh, where to start? We've got huge news in Turkey and Syria and that war expanding and U.S. troops massing already on the ground fighting Russians for months, but it's, it's really escalating right now. A Russian general confirmed killed uh, a month ago, just came out this week, confirmed dead. Yeah, U.S. troops under NATO battling Russians. That's pretty big news. We're going to be getting into that. More on the meningitis outbreak that, of course, is tied to big pharma. But their answer is you should take a vaccine for it. Uh, also, we're going to be getting into uh, City of Glen uh, era demands a $120 permit for throwing Frisbees. And that ties into similar activities all over the world uh, with the out-of-control nanny state. Uh, we've got uh, more on Bill Maher saying we need to promote death. The planet's too crowded. Let's kill the right people. That's what abortion's for. Uh, so we're going to be going over what that ties into the whole eugenics movement that poses as liberals. Why have we let them take the term liberal? Thomas Jefferson was a liberal. Liberal means more freedom. You people are authoritarians that call themselves liberals. Uh, and we'll uh, also get into the joke of the uh, criminal EU being given a Nobel Peace Prize just like Obama was. And something really out of control. We told you this was coming. They've now claimed that the Chinese have hacked the White House right as Obama sets to sign the executive order taking over what's left of the Internet. Even CBS News admits it's draconian, the executive order they've been floating around the last month. Uh, now Iran has attacked U.S. computers, and the Secretary of Defense says it's been devastating. Oh, yeah. Oh, and don't worry, though. They're going to have the NSA spy on you and tax the Internet and shut down free speech to stop those evil Iranians. Why, well, they said last year when Stuxnet had gone through Iran and uh, gone around the world, which it was admitted that U.S. and Israel made the weapon, uh, working with Microsoft, it, it, it had intimate knowledge of the, quote, Microsoft kernel. I'm not a computer expert. I read what the top experts say. And then across the board, they said this is U.S. Israeli made. Congress later admitted it. But they went on the news and said, we got to have cybersecurity and take over the web with the Pentagon, who's already in control of it. They're just announcing it now because of Stuxnet. Those dirty Iranians. Uh, so it'd be like if I walked over or you walked over and beat your neighbor's brains out with a baseball bat on live television and then told the police, arrest the corpse for beating its brains out. And the cops said, you said it, boss. And they pick up the corpse and uh, take, them, um, take them away. So I'm going to be getting into that. But, but none of that is our top story. None of that is our top story. This article that I saw yesterday and I read part of but never got to on air is our top story. And, and John Rappaport at Infowars.com, no more fake news.com, bombshell. Mind control engineers now drugging children for social justice. And this is how conditioned I've gotten. I read the New York Times yesterday. I read the article before I went on air. I didn't get to it. And it shows how conditioned I've gotten that even when CNN comes out and says, we need everybody to take a brain chip, that'll stop terrorism. Or Homeland Security comes out and says, we want you to wear a electroshock taser stun gun bracelet everyone to fly, and then if you're bad, we hit a button. That's not even an issue now. That's like, oh, maybe we need that. Um, regular Army and Marine Corps checkpoints all over the highway being announced, where well, they're not drills now. They're searching you without a warrant. They're outside the Tenth Amendment, outside posse commandatus. It violates so many laws, so many basics of freedom. I mean, it's red alert, martial law being phased in. That's not even an issue now. <clears throat> but I know, now I covered this back on Monday because they're now implementing the new Freedom Initiative. And I saw articles all over the news saying, we're gonna have compulsory mental health screening of all public school children, government training camp children, and all private schools that are accredited and, and colleges, and we're just gonna force you to come in and ask these questions. And it says, do you ever have anxiety? Do you ever have trouble sleeping? Uh, do you ever get angry? Do you ever get depressed? I mean, it's like everybody. Well, New Freedom, this was five, six years ago, World Net Daily reported on it. It was in the Pennsylvania newspapers because one of the federal 
uh, members of the committee, it was like 20 people on it, went public and said, this is written by Big Pharma to drug half the kids in America and half the adults, and they're going to force it. And they're going to say that basically everyone's mentally ill. And, and, then, and then if you don't agree with it, you're mentally ill, which now they've had the Psychiatrist and Psychologist Association come out and put it in their little file uh, in the last few years, more than, what is it, 15 different designations saying not liking big government, thinking it's corrupt, is mentally ill. And uh, you remember uh, the Wired Magazine last week, not just us, Wired Magazine reported on the new Army training manual for Army intelligence that operates domestically uh, and MPs. Uh, it says, if you don't like uh, mainline ideologies and, are, and, and don't trust the government, you are a terrorist. People go, well, that's ridiculous. No, it's not ridiculous. They've got re-education camps built. The Army admitted that. That's four months old. That's public. They call it a re-education camp. It's not us calling it that. They use the Soviet term. Okay? So, again, they're just normalizing this because they know large portions of the public are in la-la land and will believe and do anything. And this dovetails because I was rereading this this morning and it sent chills up my spine. I was going to cover it and then I noticed that John Rappaport sent chills up his spine. I want to get John on the Sunday show to talk about this. Let's get John on Sunday if he can do it, like the second hour, 4 to 6 p.m. Central. Let's get him on the 5 o'clock hour uh, Sunday. Yeah, let's get John. He does great reporting for us and, um, and he's been reporting on this for 40 years. He's been fighting these people that long. He used to work for, I don't know, ABC News, you name it, as a producer, all the big TV shows written for national publications, until he just said, I can't be part of this anymore, the talking points and all of it. He refused to play ball with them, but he's going to come on. His article's up at Infowars.com, and it is a bombshell. You know, that's the thing. We're hit by just bombshell, 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 bombshell. And those of us that are informed, it's horrifying, but we even get accustomed to it. Humans are tough, folks. I mean... People get told you got brain cancer, you'll be dead in three months. I've talked to friends that have died, you know, of it, and at first they're freaked out, but in a week or so they just get it, get, get it together and, all right, let me get my stuff together. Let me get my life together. You know, humans but are tough when we're faced with adversity, and they use that against us. I, I've talked to globalists before. One time a CEO of a major bank, well, president of a major bank, I was in the first class area with him, flying to be on The View. I've told this story many times. And, uh, you know, he's like, well, off record, let me tell you how it works. He goes, people will put up with anything because humans are resilient. And we know that. And they'll just muddle through no matter what we do. And he basically admitted the corporations were going to bankrupt the government and then take everything over. And then they would be the government. And then I was talking to my dad. He was talking to a big medical executive, uh, you know, national level. And he was telling me he went to this Harvard business thing they sent him to. If they want government funding, that's what everything's going to under government health care. And they told them that. I mean, it's, it's America's being taken over. It's a world government. It's one corporation. It's all going to merge. Foundations will run everything. And the guy's telling my dad, yeah, your son's absolutely on target. I mean, it's, it, this is 100% real is the point. The, 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 one of the board members, you can pull it up. You know, just type in New Freedom Initiative to put half of kids on drugs. You'll get the World Net Daily article from 2006. And it's got links to all of it, but it was also in the Pennsylvania Papers. And, and even their own people went public and said, we're going to put half the kids on dangerous drugs, up from 20%. Well, it got shot down. Ron Paul, God bless him, helped shoot it down in the Congress. Well, they're just doing it through the bureaucracy now. And I started seeing Monday, I told you about this on the Monday show, articles everywhere saying, get ready for your screening. But I didn't even know it was this bad. They came out in the New York Times and said... Well, it's social justice that we're going to put everybody on drugs. Because if some kids have got to be on drugs, you've got to be on drugs. They're now admitting it's social control. And they're now admitting it's about the upper class white kids. They, they deserve to be brain damaged. <laughs> we always knew they targeted kids that raised their hands and talked a lot. I mean, these people just want to hurt your family, folks. It's like Bill Maher. People need to die. You're scum. There's too many people. But it's not that. They don't want to compete with you. They want to dumb you down to control you. That's why he's on the board of PETA, which is a eugenics anti-human organization. The stuff I know about PETA that I've never even said on air is so wild. that, that But a lot of it came out. How they try to pressure members to go get animals from the shelter to kill them. And then they sit there killing them, getting off on and eating big T-bone steaks. And my wife's telling me this 13 years ago. We've been married 11 years. 
And I'm like, look, I know you're not crazy, but don't take this book deal. I just don't think that anyone's going to believe this. And they found out who my wife was, a big national publisher, and came and found her. They had private investigators on it. She was offered the contract, a huge amount of money. It was more money than I'd been offered for book deals. Okay, we're talking, we're talking a lot. Because my wife's famous. She went by the name Violet Nichols when she was a lady throwing dead raccoons on people and getting arrested in Japan and Rush Limbaugh talking about her. Her name's Kelly Nichols. She went by Violet because that was her cover name. I mean, you know, she'd go into Vogue events and throw dead raccoons on people, and she was an outside person who just loved animals and was shown slaughterhouse films. She was one of the few people to be brought into the upper sanctum for two months, and she left, and she eats meat now. She understands it's a cult. But the point is, is that, is that she was telling me, the point is Bill Maher's in this cult. Man, I know, oh gosh, I, I tell you what. I may just get her in here on air. She, I think it's time people hear all this. Plus, it's dangerous to even know this stuff and not talk about it. And she was scared of him, too. That's why I said, well, let's just not, let's fight the New World Order. This is, but now I realize it's total eugenics. Wait, wait. I'm going to give you how they want to drug your kids to hurt them straight ahead in their own admissions. Stay with us. All right, I'll get into world news. I'll get into the cybersecurity takeover. You know, the big mega corporations that wrote the Cybersecurity Act on record that hands over control of the web to them, kills the old free web and transfers it over to Internet 2, a plan I've been covering for more than a decade because they bragged about it. First, they let the web be free. They get you addicted to it, get all commerce on it to track everybody. Then they start removing the freedom. We'll be getting into all that. But when I look at this headline, attention deficit disorder or not, Pills to help in school. And they go, yeah, we're just going to drug your kids, period. Just like I have national news, CBS News, saying mercury in vaccines helps your brain. Now, everybody knows that's not true, but they just say it. I've played that clip many times. Just type into a search engine, mercury good for children's brains. It, the video pops up. ADHD drugs prescribed to all academically struggling children. That's right. If you're struggling in any way, you are to be drugged. Oh, but uh, now there's, if you drill down into the real announcement, and it's up at Infowars.com, John Rappaport breaks it down. It's the latest thing. Psychiatrists are now giving children in poor neighborhoods Adderall, a dangerous stimulant, by making false diagnosis of ADHD or no diagnosis at all. Their aim to promote social justice to improve academic performance in school. But then they go on to also say that, well, then we have to drug everybody. Make it fair. We have to have the TSA grope everyone. Oh, we don't profile. We just enslave everyone. The rationale is the drug kids will now be able to compete with children from wealthier families who attend better schools. Leading the way is Dr. Michelle Anderson, a pediatrician in the Atlanta area. Incredibly, she told the New York Times, his diagnosis of ADHD are made up as an excuse to hand out drugs. That's a quote. Oh yeah, here it is. Pension deficit disorder or not, pills to help in schools. And they're just dispensing with it now. The government and big pharma are drug dealers. And it shrinks the brain. Adderall, Ritalin shrinks the brain, expands the heart. It does everything methamphetamine does. I mean, it hurts these kids bad. When I played football, and I didn't play very long. I played uh, from about sixth grade up till I was a sophomore. We had two people drop dead on the football field, and it turned out both of them, even back then, were on Ritalin. No heart problems. You're on speed. You're running drills. You're running 100 yards back and forth. They're running around. You drop dead. And now they just dispense and say, hey, we're just handing out drugs. I've told the story of my last year in high school. I had finished up because I've been in school five years because I kind of basically missed a year of school, got sent out to work on the ranch because I was in so much trouble in Dallas. We kind of moved down here to get away from the trouble. to Austin, and um, long story short, I, 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 I didn't need a full year of school, but I needed like six months more or, or another semester, basically four months. Uh, and so 
uh, two, two, two hours a day, two periods a day, I was in the uh, office helping bring in paper and go bring notes. And, you know, they said, oh, we'll just assign you to help the office. So I was in there and, uh, you know, the, the nurse, uh, middle-aged blonde, she, you know, came on to me and stuff and a uh, little bit. And, and then she said, hey, you like drugs? And I said, uh, I literally said to her, I said, I run six miles every day. I mean, I was in great shape. And I said, don't look like I do drugs. I didn't even drink beer then. I drank beer previous to that, but I even stopped drinking beer. And I uh, got on this total health kick. And uh, she's like, well, it doesn't matter. It's fun. It's speed. You ever done speed? And I said, yeah, I did a couple times. Felt horrible. She goes, well, listen, I'm going to give you this doctor's card, the psychiatrist or psychologist's card. Come on. And I said, no, I don't want to take it. She goes, come on. It's good. It's drugs. You want it. I hand these out all day. I mean, it's just like, it's just a bunch of freaks, ladies and gentlemen. That's what America is, a bunch of weird freaks who want to get you into what they're doing. And uh, here it is. They're just in the news going, yeah, we're going to drug half the kids. You're not going to stop us. So people are crazy that put their children in a government training camp. You're learning how to be a prisoner. You're learning how to have RFID, thumbprint to get your school lunches, thumbprint or face print to get your library books. Your parents can't get you out without an ID card, and they have to be held like prisoners. It is jail training, so is the TSA, so are the airports, and they admit it is. It's Skinnerian operant conditioning. This is an empire. The globalists are run by psychiatrists and psychologists, and they've taken over. And I want to get into their culture to death when we come back. All the big top psychologists, psychiatrists, bioethicists, Peter Singer, PETA, all of them, anti-human, but they're not just anti-human. They are sick, vicious psychopaths who just love death and power and want to be able to operate and get away with whatever they want. That's who they are. That's who they are. This republic, the time we have to avert this before it goes into civil war and an absolute clash with the forces of control freakdom are running low. The final sands are beginning to pile up at the bottom and we are just simply trying to get as many people as we can awake to understand the criminal evil we're dealing with. Folks, I've been studying politics for more than 20 years, been on air for 17. And the reality of what I've discovered is so horrific that I know why people have trouble dealing with it. But the facts are in. Armies of psychopaths, sociopaths, sadists, control freaks, mentally ill, gibbering demons have formed giant armies of evil against humanity. And we're going to be talking about them in just one moment and tying it into one of their, one of their arrogant, know-it-all uh, priest, Bill Maher. And I just want Bill Maher to know, I see you, Maher. And I know you've joined evil and you think that uh, you're going to deliver the rest of us into a hell because you're already living in one. You will fail. You will fail. And the sands of time for you are running low. Now, before I go any further here today, I want to simply point out to everyone that we are listener supported and I normally start the promotion of the money bomb a month out it's listener demanded five years ago this will be the fifth annual and uh, people said hey Alex come on you know Ron Paul said half his money comes from your audience on the show he just said that on the show why don't you start it I said no I'm not going to do it and then listeners made a site did it and about a week before I, I wouldn't promote it and people said come on promote it and so I did and well, that gave us the extra money to move into a bigger operation. We've since expanded two more times, and we've now got the TV, uh, two of the TV studios set up, the sets. We're building two more uh, little ones for kind of fireside chat area and then also an entertainment news coverage area. We're going to launch a bunch of new things in the future. We're looking at the different uh, sharing networks with the different TV systems worldwide. Most of it's not satellite now. You upload a big sharing system, even in live time. The fiber optics, the... Uh, we, we will do a free-to-air satellite uplink. That'll cost quite a bit of money, but, but not as much as you'd think. The point is, we're doing a lot of stuff. We're going to that next level. And then I intend to be able to fund things, hopefully, not even do one of these next year. Um, but on the razor's edge, whether I was to do one or not, that's why we haven't promoted as much. But we do need the capital. It costs about $500,000 a month to run this operation. We've got about 50 crew members and contractors. If you count all the writers, researchers, film editors, 
uh, the journalists, uh, people running the show, uh, you know, producers, bookers, uh, customer service, shipping department, uh, sales, um, and some other areas. So um, bookkeeping, two people on that. So the point is that uh, we're going to the next level. And to do it securely in the middle of this recession slash depression, it's important to have funding. And NPR gets a bunch of government funding that's taken at gunpoint and then also begs for money all day, you know, 12 uh, months out of the year. We do this once a year, a few times ahead of the event and then on the day. We're going to go 48 hours next Thursday and Friday with a bunch of guest host, amazing surprise guests, you name it. Now, uh, that's next Thursday and Friday, InfoWars Money Bomb 2012. And we'd like to raise a million dollars. That would really, uh, I mean, you know, like a CNN studio is like $5 million, folks. Uh, so we're doing all this on the cheaps, but some of that's caused us problems. There's a few upgrades we need to do. It's essential that we raise half a million dollars. But we'd like to uh, raise a million dollars. So go over to InfoWarsMoneyBomb.com, InfoWarsMoneyBomb.com. And you can donate $25 up to $1,000 or more. And if you donate $1,000, you get a signed bullhorn, stuff like that. Um, we got some T-shirts up there that we only printed a limited number for that say InfoWars Money Bomb, you know, Liberty or Death. It's all up there. And, and when you buy the quality products from us, that all supports the show. So there's also, you can donate that way, InfoWarsMoneyBomb.com. We're going to get banners up today at InfoWars.com and PrisonBonnet.com. So you can go over there to the site. I would say buy the magazine to support us, but my goal with that is to get the word out to people that aren't awake, so it's at cost. And we're now going to Glossy um, with your subscriptions. Uh, we found a way to do that, and it, it's like the old Rolling Stone in its format. You know, it's big, it's a big Glossy, uh, and it's uh, simply, simply amazing. Just simply amazing. I mean, look at this. Flu shots give you the flu. Vaccinations kill. Incredible graphics and art in this baby. DARPA, the real uh, Skynet, all the surveillance systems, QE3, uh, the two parties controlled by the globalist, uh, what's in your house, the tracker systems. All of it available at InfoWarsStore.com. You can get 12 issues plus the first issue for $59.95. That includes the shipping. Or you can just buy them in groups of 10 up to 100 at cost. What is it, $14.95 for uh, 10 and it's even more discounted up to 100, InfoWarsStore.com. Great way to wake people up. It's like a big color book. A lot of people won't even read a book. It's intimidating. It's like, hey, check this out. You want to know about the technocracy? This has got all the quotes of the elite, how they're poisoning us and how they plan to get rid of us and use robots and drones to do it. Hey, or, or hey, you know, this first issue, Rome burned, will we? The economic collapse engineered, QE3 coming, and then it did happen. Uh, you know, boom, it's important. InfoWarsStore.com, InfoWarsStore.com. And folks, by voting with your dollars and voting through free association, by spreading the word about the radio show, if you're listening to us on AM and FM stations or about InfoWars.com and the free podcast or audio streams or by getting a $5.95 a month subscription to PrisonPlanet.tv to see all my films and the daily radio show and the nightly news, you support alternative media. But I've got to say this as well. Whatever you do, our AM and FM stations, even though we're dominant on the web, number one radio show on the web, that's not just me saying that. That's major trades publications, Talkers Magazine, Radio Inc., Google Analytics, uh, Alexa. I mean, everybody says they're number one, and it's, it's kind of obnoxious, people that have no listeners saying it. We are number one when it comes to the Internet, uh, and, the, and, the, and the numbers are there. You know, when, when, when one of my websites is three times the size of Rush Limbaugh's, I mean, you know, it gives you an idea, and three times the size of MSNBC, you know, Infowars.com. I mean, there's the proof right there. Just go look it up at Alexa. We're not bragging. We're saying, wow, we're having success. Thank all of you, whether it's media people that have helped us and you know who you are, or whether it's uh, the general listeners. AM and FM, though, even though we're number one on the web, we're now becoming very, very powerful on AM and FM. And let me tell you, I, I can tell that that's a big deal. Uh, and people are really paying attention. And I've got a big responsibility here, and we are just getting picked up. I don't know, it's over 15 stations the last two weeks. There's 50-plus stations in the process of signing up the show right now, getting out of their contracts with their people. I mean, it's just, it was already happening. It was, we were already growing fast, but Michael Savage leaving radio, it's just, uh, I mean, it's huge. So uh, we're trying to really up our game here to get the word out and fight the globalists. We appreciate the AM and FM station owners, their general managers, their program directors, and uh, it's not enough that we get top ratings for people. We get big ratings deliveries all over the country. That's one reason we were already growing. 
you got to have the sponsorship. And the globalists like to fund crud. And that's been admitted in the radio industry trying to kill it. Don't let them kill talk radio, period. Support the stations you hear us on. If you're a local business, voting with your dollars is what's going to overturn the globalists while we still have some free market to fight back. The collectivists want to get rid of that so we're at their mercy and then it's over. We're very close to it without violent resistance and I don't want to go there. I want to try to fix this peacefully and say we tried as hard as we could. So, again, please, if you're a local uh, business, even if it's a small package, it doesn't matter. Uh, do a radio package with our local stations. Uh, if you want to just donate to them. I've talked to stations that don't take donations, and they go, my, my gosh, we had you on the weekend and got all these donations, and then we put you on weeknights, and the ratings came in. Now we're putting you on live. You know, That's what happens every station that picks us up. It's incredible. But it's not. sometimes it's not enough because... You don't get the big globalist sponsors, you know, like General Motors that, you know, lives off government payoffs. And I got a General Motors car. I mean, I'm not attacking General Motors. The point is, is that that's going on. And we're getting very deep into this crony capitalist game where they pick the winners and losers. It's not just about you know, being successful. It's not just about having an audience. That's a lie, folks. That's what it used to be about. Now it's about being a good little global stooge. Well, we're not doing that. And the stations are standing with us. So be sure and not just support them, not just support their sponsors, but also, hey, it's time to go stand on the street corner with a sandwich board saying, tune into the local station. People do that, by the way, here in Austin and all over. It's time to really warn people. I mean, listen, they got 20% of our kids in 2006 on psychotropic drugs that physically hurt them, and, and they have quotas, and they push them on kids who, who, who aren't even, quote, behavior problems. They give them High fructose, caffeine drinks, Twinkies all day, television all day that screws up the wiring of their brain. Hundreds of studies. New ones came out this week. Uh, guys, actually pull up the London Guardian article about scientists say don't let under threes even watch television. Because they, they suspend disbelief and, 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 and mentally get trained to not think on their own, to not live. Talk radio boost IQ and cognitive neuron connections. Just look that up. Books boost it. Because when I say Marilyn Monroe and you're listening on the radio, you image Marilyn Monroe with her skirt blowing up, you know, with the air shooting up, don't you? At least if you're a guy, you do. Uh, if uh, you say uh, great white shark, you image a great white shark coming up out of the water and, you know, biting a big piece of meat hanging down. Chum. When you watch non-interactive television, it absolutely hammers your IQ. And there's the headline. Ban under threes from watching television study says. I mean, and, and type, type in Alzheimer's television study. I mean, it's off the charts. Well, they know, ladies and gentlemen. I've been in the psychology departments of two major universities, and all they're looking at is how to flicker the television to put you deeper into a trance. This is a big deal, and we're not going to get out of it by just... Okay, well, things are bad. Boy, things are, we're living in 2012, sci-fi, Margaret. No, yeah, Bob. <clears throat> the fact that we are getting on so many stations shows people are waking up. The fact that so many program directors and owners and general managers go, you know, I thought that guy was crazy, but it's all coming true. We better put this guy on the air. Because more and more, it's not just about money or ratings. People understand, man, we're not going to have a stinking country if we don't turn this around. We've got a batch of criminal authoritarian control freaks that have built infrastructures based on fraud, and they've gotten better and better at fraud, and it's all they know is fraud, and they want more and more of the economy, and as they kill the economy through fraud, their answer is more fraud, which means less and less for even the, the, the elites and their minions, so then they expand, expand, expand until everything collapses. But now they've written actuaries up saying, well, the robots and the automation, it will supply us with what we need even when society collapses. But the general public isn't going to get it. So now they're romanticizing mass death, teaching you you're scum, telling you you're trash, telling you humanity is, 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 is filth. <clears throat> so now I'm going to get into this right now. Uh, Bill Maher. I talked about Bill Maher yesterday. The story went extremely viral. Paul Watson wrote a story about it. Bill Maher, we need to promote death. And if you listen in here, he says, the planet's too crowded, let's kill the right people. And he confuses it with the death penalty. But if you listen, he says, yeah, well, a lot of people that support abortion, they just know there's too many people. That's what that's really all about. Well, yeah, how many abortionists have we got on tape saying, I, you know, we need to kill black babies or kill minority babies? I mean, I've heard that dozens of times before. 
Now it's on tape. But, it's, but, but they say that to whites thinking, oh, you must be racist like them. It could be an Asian. It could be a black doctor. It could be, it doesn't matter. I mean, I've heard black people say, well, we need to get rid of these poor blacks. That's how you get in the globalist club. When you get around real establishment liberals, they're not liberals. They are vicious, parasitic people that are into the fact that they know how people work and, and everybody's scum and they're all scientific and survival of the fittest, social Darwinism, that they need to be a predator and you deserve for them to scam you. And so they're going to have long hair and sandals and act all trendy. That doesn't mean long hair and sandals means you're bad. There's real loving peace type hippies that are good people. But the globalists camouflage themselves as the lady in the flower dress. These, these people are sick, okay? I've been around them. I've, I grew up around it. I've seen it. I've talked to so many, you know, psych warfare people, famous government people, you name it. And they'll go, yeah, you're right about all this. What you going to do about it? You need to just join it, Alex. You'll never beat it. You know, we're in control because we're the best. No, cancer is not in control just because it takes over the body. And so I wanted to talk about Bill Maher and, and, and what he really stands for. You know, the idea of I don't like there being traffic. Let's kill people. It's really just all about we're going to kill people, and it's that decision that gets them on a power trip. My wife, again, only worked for PETA for a couple years. She did it as an activist, you know, going out, handing out literature, dressing up in stupid costumes, and then she did a good job of it, knew how to deal with media because she, you know, had a degree in communication uh, and had worked in PR, and they brought her in to, the, you know, upstairs in Norfolk, Virginia. And, and I remember her when we were, we'd been dating a couple of years and she moved in with me because we were getting ready to get married. And uh, she's like, yeah, I got contacted. You know, the, you know, they know who I am, even though I use a different name and they want me to do this big book. Uh, and somehow they know that I didn't like what Peter was doing and left. And then, I mean, she's one of the only ones to ever get in to the top. And, and that was only for a few months. And she was like, what in earth is this? And she got scared even telling me about it. You know, when somebody lowers their voice and starts telling you, and um, I got to be honest, I mean, it's, it, it creeped me out. I mean, they're, because they come in there, they're bad news, folks, and they're at the very top. Peter Singer is like their quasi-secret director. He's the guy that says kill kids up to age three. Bill Maher is on their board, uh, and uh, this is who they are, man, and, and they are, uh, they are sick. Uh, she and one of her friends left because they were pressuring them to go get animals from the animal shelter just because they like to kill them. And I said, you can't write a book about that. I go, I believe you, honey, but no one's going to believe that. Of course, later the police caught him with one guy dumping hundreds of dead animals there in Norfolk. And they caught him some other times. I mean, it's just like, what the? And the other stuff she told me, I'm not even going to say. It's just, it's, it's unbelievable. <laughs> I mean, it's just unbelievable. And, 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 and I don't know what to call them. I would call them devil worshipers. I mean, that's what, that, that's what I would describe. It's a, it's a devil cult. It's an anti-human, psycho, power trip cult. Uh, and uh, transhumanist, eugenicist, uh, just pit of hell filth. And, you know, Bill Maher, of course he comes out and says, kill people, kill, we need more death, I love death. Because he's on the board for a reason. And that's just him. You know, they're saying, you know what, life's nothing, a dog can do it. That's, that, that's scientifically crafted by Singer and others, and they've said this, to make you think you're trash so they can just tell you to stand down and die because they know you've got that life force. They know you're a human. They know you've got power. They're anti-human. They're anti-God. They're anti-creation. They're anti-strength. And I will defeat them. I choose life eternal. And we must crush these enemies of life. We must stop being weak. We must identify who they are and resist them. The globalists are cowards. They slowly build their control grid, their spy grid. They dumb the population down with the chemicals they put in the food and the water. Now they openly say, we're going to put statins in the water. We're going to put Prozac in the water. They've already been caught putting the Prozac in. We're going to take control of your life. We're going to tell parents what to pack their kids for lunch. You know what? You can't pack lunch. We're going to shut down the small farms. And look at this New York Times. If you're watching on PrisonPlanet.tv, it's amazing. If not, just go to... Uh, Infowars.com were linked to it. Attention, deficit or not, pills to help school. And it shows the son, Quentin, who takes the drug Resperidol, which, of course, is an amphetamine base, and it says it boosts his, his attention. Look at him. He looks. Show the poor boy. What does he look like to you? If you're looking at this, he looks like the street people you see 
that are on serious drugs, and because that's what these are. And and then look, he's got candy right there in his hand on top of it. He's got dum dums, lollipops. They feed these kids crud, wonder why they bounce off the walls, and then put them on speed to burn them out. And go, look, he behaves much better now. They go, wow, the speed makes the kid burn out. Yeah, that's the whole point. And look at poor mama. You know mama's not a bad person. If I could spend an hour with her, I could wake her up, tell her about healthy food, turn her around. That's what's so sad. If I could just reach these people, if I could just get through, but I can't reach everybody. 15 million a week is not enough. Let me uh, get back into Bill Maher. It's all about him lecturing you, and, and, and life is nothing. A dog can do it. And, and, you know, what if a kid's got Down syndrome or anything else you don't want? Yeah, now they're aborting kids for the color of eyes they have or the sex they have. You see, it always leads right to pure evil. And then they point at the giant welfare cesspits they've created of destroyed humans and say, see, we need to get rid of that trash when they're the ones that did it to them. I'm telling you folks, I've been around these people, I know them, it's a cult. It's a cult, and they love it that they're drugging our kids. And now they say, we're going to drug half the kids. And now I have see cases where they send the CPS and take kids. If the school says put them on drugs, they come and take the kids, saying the, the school psychologist says, no judge, no jury, the, the priest says, your kid's got to take this. So you got to take it. Or the CPS takes them off to a dungeon, and they put almost 70% of kids, 69% nationwide, on these drugs when the state has them. Let's, let's go out to break with, again, Bill Maher, we need to promote death. And under it, we have all the population statistics, how the West population is plunging, and how it's going to make society collapse, which is the globalist plan. Let's go ahead and uh, go to this clip of this pig, this, this lecturing, arrogant, loving the sound of his voice with scripted crud. Here it is. You support the death penalty, according to my note. Isn't I, it largely Republican? I don't, yeah. You might not have birthed the idea, I but... So. I mean, I have a lot of ideas that you might consider conservative, but I feel like on that, I'm just consistent, like the Pope is consistent. The Pope is consistently pro-life. I'm consistently pro-death. I'm <laughs> for the death penalty, oh, I bet. although I do believe in more DNA testing. I mm -hmm. My motto is, let's kill the right people. <laughs> I'm pro-choice. I'm for assisted suicide. I'm for regular suicide. I'm for whatever gets the freeway moving. That's okay. what I'm for. <laughs> All right, wait, wait. It's too crowded. So The planet is too crowded, and we pause. need to promote death. When I don't I wish any harm upon uh, Bill Maher. Hit pause. Pro-death penalty. Hit pause. I don't wish any harm uh, upon Bill Maher. Uh, but yeah, how much you want to bet that guy would beg for his life and beg hard? He's just a soft little chicken neck coward. Let's go out to break with the rest of him, getting the really sick statements. Here it is. And pro-choice. I don't think they intersect. You may be the lone person in the world at that intersection. Absolutely not. I've met plenty of people who have the same feelings. Pro-choice and... Yeah, I mean, well, pro... I mean, you know, I'm not randomly going around in the street saying, hey, we're going to kill you. I mean, we're talking about people who've earned it. Stay but there. as I say, you know... Coming up, we have the amazing report by David Knight. There is a new incredible hoax being run by the EPA. They say they've got to take property and shut down cars uh, in the Appalachians because the Smoky Mountains are smoky. And they say the smoke uh, is not water vapor with warm air hitting cold air, as the uh, natives have called it for thousands of years, Cherokee and others. No, uh, they say that it's called smoky because of the smog <laughs> from cars. You, you heard me right in a very sparsely populated area. And we actually went and looked up the numbers. It's very uh, low level of pollution in the area. It's not smog. It's not Los Angeles. That is smog in Los Angeles or Tokyo or Beijing. <laughs> Uh, but, uh, hey, they say polar bears can't swim, so that's coming up. Uh, listen, uh, here's the rest of what Bill Maher says about, hey, you know, let's abort babies that have any problems. And, you know, he's for more death, whatever gets the uh, freeway moving. Uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, play uh, this clip. Uh, here is the clip of Bill Maher, Mr. Mr. Death. And uh, I'll be back. Stay with us.
support the death penalty, according to my notes. Isn't it largely Republican? I don't, yeah. You might not have birthed the idea, I but... So. I mean, I have a lot of ideas that you might consider conservative. But I feel like on that, I'm just consistent, like the Pope is consistent. The Pope is consistently pro-life. I'm consistently pro-death. I'm, I'm for the death penalty, although I do believe in more DNA testing. I, my motto is, let's kill the right people. I'm pro-choice. I'm for assisted suicide. I'm for regular suicide. I'm for whatever gets the freeway moving. That's okay. what I'm for. All right, wait, wait. It's too crowded. So the planet is too crowded, and we need to promote death. When I look at the Venn diagram of people who are pro-death penalty and pro-choice, I don't think they intersect. You may be the lone person in the world at that intersection. Absolutely not. I've met plenty of people who have the same feelings. Pro-choice and... Yeah, I mean, well, pro... I mean, you know, I'm not randomly going around in the street saying, hey, we're going to kill you. I mean, we're talking about people who've earned it. But as I say, you know... Kill the right people. Uh, kill the right people. But I, I'm just not one of those people who thinks all life is precious, you know? I, I bet you a lot of people wouldn't say that, but if you're pro-choice... Maybe that's really what you're thinking anyway. I mean, this is the big controversy that Rick Santorum brought up. He does not like prenatal testing because he says that leads to abortion because people find out that they're going to have a child who is not normal in some way and they have an abortion because they don't want to raise a child with severe challenges. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. To not bring someone in the world um, whose life is going to be so miserable in so many ways and so severely compromised. I mean, it's not that hard to create life. It's teeming everywhere. It's something a dog can do. We're back, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, again, uh, there you have it. And I just don't know what to say anymore because the snake likeness of the voice and knowing he's on the PETA board and, and knowing that all that stuff about PETA came out. A lot of what my wife told me came out and they didn't even get in trouble. It, it's just sick. It's so sick to know who these vampires really are and to watch them just continue to get away with everything. I, and the public just doesn't care because they're in a trance. Uh, we got a bunch of news coming up I'm going to get to and then we're going to have Lindsey Williams on uh, coming up here in the next segment. And we are going to continue to transmit worldwide and try to warn humanity about what's going on. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we'll be uh, right back after this quick break. I'm Alex Jones, and the websites are InfoWarsMoneyBomb.com. That's coming up next week, 48-hour transmission next Thursday and Friday. Lord willing, we'll be on air. Thank you, my friends, for joining us. Uh, on this battlefield, there are people that do win. There are people, and it's people that stand up for basic human liberty and who stand up for the truth and who face the truth and stand up against those that want to be parasites and take control of society. Uh, let's jump into some of the news. Again, this is our top story today. Uh, I covered it uh, quite a bit in the last hour. And coming up before Lindsey Williams comes on, uh, we're going to have a report for you from Jakari Jackson on uh, Kit Kats. We talked about the sum last week with their ads about GPS in them. And if you win, you get SWAT teamed and uh, other bizarre ads they're running uh, right now that we're going to be uh, breaking down. And also a report uh, that we're going to be uh, going over as well that David Knight did. But they're now saying the Smoky Mountains are smoky because of smog and they need to pass all these new taxes on people. They also say polar bears can't swim. Uh, and so that is why we need to pay a global tax is because the polar bears are all dying. Doesn't matter if their numbers are up fivefold. Uh, that is fivefold uh, from where they were in the 1950s. You can just type type in polar bear populations exploding. You'll get mainstream news. But... It just doesn't matter. They tell the kids they're dying, they can't swim, the Smoky Mountains are smoky. On the EPA website, they say this, and in the tours, they say it. Look at the pollution. They, here in Austin, whenever there's fog, they get on the news. You know, when uh, hot air hits cold air and it's fog, and they say, this is smog. I mean, they say weather changes are unnatural. Uh, ooga booga, the sun will be eaten by the dragon if you don't, you know, have human sacrifices, what they did thousands of years ago. So that's the type of stuff that is going on. And then at the bottom of the hour, Lindsey Williams uh, will be uh, joining us. Uh, Lindsey Williams will join us for an hour and a half today. 
uh, to break down what his insider sources have been telling him. He's proven to be pretty darn accurate, and I know who his sources are, uh, about where the globalists are going. Two years ago, he said here on the uh, broadcast uh, that uh, they were going to be having a big uh, uh, engineered blow-up uh, inside uh, of the Middle East, but that that would be a diversion for the financial collapse and what was coming uh, over in uh, the uh, area of China, and that China was the big one. So uh, that is coming up. Uh, first off, though, let's go to Jakari Jackson's report here for the radio audience. If you're a radio listener, you can also watch at prisonplanet.tv or infowarsnews.com uh, because it's bizarre. They have this Kit Kat ad where SWAT teams raid you if you get the GPS in the candy bar, and then you get uh, tens of thousands of, I think it's 10,000 pounds, like $15,000, $16,000. And this is over in England, but they also have Kit Kat ads with the TSA pedo bear that has gone viral. The TSA two years ago tried to get a law passed in Congress banning the pedo bear and any lampooning of the TSA, but Congress wouldn't pass it. That in of itself shows how draconian and authoritarian they are. And it's a it's a it's a it's called pedo pedo bear, and he's a little pervert in a, uh, a TSA uniform, and he's become huge on the web, millions and millions and millions of. You know, views of, of, of different images passed around of him. And they have the exact same bear uh, in their ads now, uh, selling kids candy. I mean, it, it's just SWAT teams are going to get you. Pedo bear is coming. Uh, just all part of the, of the bizarre psych warfare. Uh, here is that report uh, with Jakari Jackson. I'm Jakari Jackson for the InfoWars Nightly News. Governments and other organizations tracking what you eat is nothing new. But what if what you ate could actually track you? In the very near future, someone somewhere will purchase a chocolate bar. The bar will be equipped with a GPS signaling device. Kit Kat has included in their candies an RFID chip that they're confident can locate you anywhere on the planet. Find the special bar and give the owner 10,000 pounds. Cue girly scream. <laughs> Now, while this may be nothing more than a simple marketing gimmick, it does raise the RFID concerns of many privacy advocates, such advocates as the Hernandez family of San Antonio, Texas. I'm protesting these RFID tracking chips. The children don't need to be tracked. Why do you feel that wearing the RFID chips is a bad thing? Well, I feel it's an invasion of my uh, religious beliefs. I feel does this in any way make you feel safer? No, it doesn't. It actually bothers me a whole lot, and I feel completely unsafe knowing that this can be hacked by pedophiles. Now, as you heard the young lady say in that clip, RFIDs violate not only her religious freedom, but also give her concern about pedophiles. And speaking of pedophiles and possibly unrelated Kit Kat news, Kit Kat has employed this young bear as part of their marketing campaign, and it just so happens that this bear also bears a strong resemblance to the pedo bear the bear that has garnered much internet fame as an unofficial member of the TSA. Kit Kat claims the similarities between these two bears is completely coincidental, but here's a picture that you can judge for yourself. Now, regardless of how you feel about RFIDs, we see an example in the Hernandez family of a group that does not want to be tracked, and we see an example with the Kit Kat candies of a person who's not expecting to be tracked. I'm Jakari Jackson for the InfoWars Nightly News. All right, there you go, ladies and gentlemen. There is that report from Jakari Jackson uh, that aired last night on InfoWars Nightly News. I'd like to bring some of that to you here. That was played off our computers in high res. Uh, the, usually the day after it airs on the news, those of you that support the Nightly News, then goes to YouTube where we get millions of views a week alone reaching the public. Uh, and uh, it's, again, all thanks to your support. Uh, David Knight, uh, our newest reporter, moved down here from the Carolinas, uh, before he came here, he went on a family vacation with his uh, children and wife. And, well, he tells the story, uh, and Jakari Jackson introduces him, but I just want to give the background that this is the total hoax where they say polar bears are almost all dead. They're up fivefold. The government even admits that in their own uh, numbers, fish and wildlife, but it doesn't matter. They just say they're dead, and they can't swim. They're the greatest land animal swimmer. They've been known to swim over 200 miles, they hunt on the ice flows beluga whale. They know you don't know that. They say they're all dying. Uh, they say that, uh, well, Al Gore said by last year, Calif uh, Southern California be underwater. You, you notice it's not, and he bought a house there. Uh, it's all about pay them money or it's the end of the world. Pay them money because humans are bad. Pay them money because you need to get out of the way and let them run your life. 
And the Smoky Mountains, they're saying shut down the coal power plants, um, shut down any type of particulate out of cars. And they tell them in the brochures at the parks, they tell the locals. Uh, I can see on YouTube in the comments, people are going, yeah, no, I live here. And they tell us that's smog. Folks, it's, it's, it's where warm air hits cool air. They're known as the Smoky Mountains in the native tongue. Since the explorers got here, it's an Indian name. Okay? In fact, most of the names we have here are Indian names. Texas is an Indian name. Okay, they have the Smoky Mountains. It's not real smoke. Just like they show uh, power plants in the winter and show what looks like smoke. It's hot air, carbon dioxide and water vapor coming out. Nothing else is coming out. But it looks like huge, horrible smoke. You notice though the smoke doesn't keep going. It stops because the water heats up or cools off to the temperature of the surrounding area. Generally cools off. Just like when you blow air out of your mouth on a cold winter day when it's 20 degrees, you see that big smoke? You're not a dragon. And I know our listeners know this, but for people that believe the government, I promise you that's not smoke or a pollutant. I promise you that's hot water vapor out of your lungs and out of your esophagus and mouth. I promise it's not smoke unless you just took a big pull off of Marlboro Red. Uh, we have the David Knight report right here. Uh, and then we're going to skip this break and uh, bring in uh, our uh, next uh, guest here uh, on the broadcast, uh, Lindsey Williams. Uh, here it is, though, the Smoky Mountains, because you're bad. I'm David Knight, reporting for InfoWars Nightly News. Just before I left for Austin, I took my family to the Smoky Mountains. Now, long before the Europeans named it the Smoky Mountains, the Cherokee had a name for it. And I, if I pronounce it correctly, it's something like Shakonoque, which means place of the fine particulate smog. No, not actually. That's what the EPA wants you to think. I was surprised to see this graphic on the EPA site where they explain what PM 2.5 is. They use the Smoky Mountains as a poster child. Is it really PM 2.5 and man-made smog that makes the Smoky Mountains smoky? No. We all know that it isn't, but we see this kind of thing done over and over again, like they did with polar bears on ice flows. Remember that? And, of course, Al Gore is telling us that the oceans are rising, but he builds his $9 million mansion in Montecito, California, right on the ocean side. So I don't think he believes that either. But they use these subliminal messages to try to convince us. And they can be quite effective. And speaking of bears, every visitor to the Smoky Mountains gets a handout that looks like this, warning you about black bears. And as my wife was reading that to the small children, I started thinking, a lot of the stuff they were saying about bears could be said about government, especially about the EPA. Let me just uh, read a few things here. Uh, with aggressive behavior, the bear, the EPA, is demanding more space. If the bear or EPA continues to follow you, stand your ground. If the EPA gets closer, talk louder or shout at it. Act aggressively. Act together as a group if you have companions. Make yourself look as large as possible. Don't run, don't turn away, and don't feed the EPA. It only encourages further problems. David Knight, Friend for Wars Nightly News. Well, I tell you, we're really excited to have David here. We had time to get that report in, so we won't skip the break. We'll come back with Lindsey Williams, uh, who I really appreciate taking time out to join us. He'll be with us for over an hour and a half, and we'll take your calls in the next hour. Uh, he doesn't have an official website, uh, but there is one that he uh, basically endorses. It's got a lot of great material on it. We'll give you that address when we come back. And he's also a best-selling author, incredible whistleblower. Lindsey Williams, straight ahead. It's InfoWars Radio. You just heard an excerpt of InfoWars Nightly News. I'm Alex Jones. The transmission against tyranny will continue. We will stand our ground against the tyrants. Stay with us. Okay, my friends, we are back live. I am your host, Alex Jones. And for the next hour and 40 minutes, roughly, we are joined by Lindsey Williams. He was on for an hour a few days ago, and listeners just demanded that he'd be back on to finish all of his points. Uh, we'll open the phones up for the entire next hour, interspersed with some news and some other excerpts of InfoWars Nightly News. Uh, I'll reintroduce him briefly. Uh, he worked on the Trans-Alaska Pipeline in an inner board meeting uh, group where they had all the oil companies together as they do, basically dividing up the spoils. That's how that works. And... Lindsay was the chaplain for three years, really an intermediary. They usually choose a chaplain to do that, uh, who they think has got good communication skills between the oil field workers and their unions and some of the non-unionized people. And he learned about the New World Order right there, how there was more oil there than in Saudi Arabia, how it was sweet crude in many areas. That, all that came out. He wrote his best-selling book back in the 
uh, early 80s energy non-crisis. Now, I know who his two big sources are. Uh, Mr. Fromm died a year and a half ago of cancer. Uh, the other fellow was the CEO of a big three oil company, Dr. Stan Monteith, syndicated talk show host on this network. Uh, believed Lindsay, I don't know, six, seven years ago, but actually called his sources and they got a little upset. Well, yeah, we are his sources. What are you doing calling me? <laughs> Dr. Monteith, a, a retired uh, surgeon. So th this info is real. Now, does that mean these guys know everything and that the elite don't change their minds sometimes? It happens occasionally. But I'm telling you, if you're just a new listener, this is a short segment, long segment coming up, just to introduce Lindsay here. Lindsay did say, it's all on record, was it back in 2007 or so? He said, okay, watch, oil will now go to 150. Shit there, it did. Now he said, okay, it's at 150, now it's going to go to 100." from $150 to $40. It went to $40 and then below it. Then he said, now it's going to go back up to this and wait. Then it's going to go, and it all happened. He said last year, there will not be QE3. He said, there will not be QE3. He said, that will, that will not be going on. Uh, he said, it will happen at the end of, or the middle of next year. And, and he said, uh, two years ago, there'll be big attacks and uh, crises and everything else going on in the Middle East. But then it will move to China. That's the big one. Boom, that happened. So I'm really hoping he's wrong up next because he's been right so much, his source, the one living one, because it dovetails with my research that they're going to implode things by the end of this year. They've already imploded it, but imploded it more. And now we're seeing dollar devaluation. So he's going to go through, recap, because we've got three minutes here, what his source told him, what he hasn't covered yet with us, and where all this is going. Lindsay Williams of uh, lindsaywilliams.net. That's a fan site, but you and you, uh, you like it. Uh, you join us here. Thank you for coming on. You don't like for me to say thank you for allowing me to be on InfoWars, so I won't say it this morning, Alex. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. You're, you're right. Uh, it's by the providence of God. I would have never known any of this had it not been that the Lord allowed a little insignificant missionary to, for three years' time, live with the elite of the world. Keep in touch with them for 35 years. Now, everyone in the InfoWars listening audience today, please get a pencil and paper. I'm going to make a number of predictions based on what I've heard from my elite friends just recently, and I've had numerous contacts. Yesterday morning, Alex, I even received an email in relation to the vice presidential debate last night, I sat there and watched it and realized that these people knew exactly how these people had been briefed. So folks, you have that pencil and paper, a number of quick predictions, many of them will be completely separated from the other. Take these down, number one. I said back about two years ago when my elite friend told me some things about the future, I made the statement at the time that I received a lot of criticism for, but you're finding it right. It has happened exactly as they told me. Please, don't give me credit for this. Give the credit to the people that have been willing to tell me what they're doing. And they, at the time, they said, Chaplain, there's not going to be any shortage of food and water on the grocery store shelves. And at the time, everybody was saying, oh, there's going to be a shortage of food, there's going to be a shortage of bread, the grocery store shelves are going to be empty. And I said, no, they aren't. But I said, you'll go hungry. And I couldn't understand that when my elite friend told it to me until I figured out after asking him some questions exactly what well, he was Well, you said that about. more than two years ago. You said, oh, there's not, the, there's not going to be a food shortage. There's going to be inflation, and you're not going to be able to afford it. And since then, food prices in many areas have doubled. Yes, and they're going to double again. You know, I like avocados, and for somehow an avocado sandwich is just great in the afternoon. You're paying a dollar for one right now at the grocery store. You're going to be paying $2. But now it's $40 billion every month indefinitely, September, October, November, December, right on through. It is going to proportionately diminish the purchasing power of your dollar with every $40 billion that he pulls out of thin air. All right, Lindsay, stay there. Now. I want you to recap everything you said last time, but there was a lot you didn't get to. You just race through it wherever you want to go on the other side of this quick break and then a whole hour of your calls for Lindsey Williams. We appreciate him joining us today. We'll be right back. I'm Alex Jones. Monday through Friday from 11 a.m. until 2 p.m. Central. Back. Of course, Sundays, 4 to 6 p.m. with a Sunday radio broadcast. And weeknights, 7 o'clock, InfoWars Nightly News. I host it about three nights a week, but I also contribute with reports and a lot more. But our investigative team is just getting better and better. 
And if you want to support true, alternative, pro-liberty, pro-human, pro-God, pro-country, pro-family, everything that's under attack, then be sure and subscribe to InfoWarsNews.com to see the daytime radio show and the nighttime TV show and all the films and my book and Paul Watson's book and special events and feeds of live events I do. Uh, there's 16, 17 years of material up there, but uh, the site's been around nine and a half years. PrisonPlanet.tv. And lastly, you asked for it, we've done it. Uh, we've got a new uh, subscription magazine out covering the most important issues, the globalist takeover, the technocracy, the economic implosion. Uh, and you can subscribe right now at InfoWarsStore.com. You can also find Pro Pure Water Filters discounted 10% with the promo code WATER. We already have the lowest prices, but that's 10%. On top of that, the new film, Genetic Roulette, off the book by uh, Jeffrey Smith indoctrination about the public school brainwashing centers and so much more. Speaking of that, I want to bring this up to Lindsey Williams later after he goes over his points. Drugs to improve learning, New York Times. Another article after yesterday, I told you on Monday, they're promoting the new freedom initiative without Congress passing it to put 50% of kids, that's the goal written by Big Pharma, this is all admitted, on psychotropics, uh, amphetamines, uh, psychotropics, it's so deadly. Attention deficit or not, pills to help in school. And they said without even having a designation, we're going to put your kids on drugs. With or without attention deficit, it helps them learn. New York Times, I mean, folks, they're coming. Big Pharma lies and says it's the law to take shots and then tries to mandate you take their garbage. And then it comes out that Big Pharma has been caught giving people the measles, mumps, rubella in the shots to get a epidemic going to scare everyone into taking it. These people know what they're doing. These are criminals. <laughs> I just, it's time to realize that's what tyranny is, is when good people just get in a subservient mode and just give in, and then Katie, bar the door, the very worst elements will take over. You give in to corruption, it will race to the bottom. Because even if somebody's corrupt, well, they'll get pushed out by someone more corrupt, and then more corrupt, and then more corrupt. And then people that don't mind killing you will be replaced with folks that they don't just mind, they love it. They love their job. And that's where we're going. We're being drugged towards absolute despotism, inch by inch, cl closer and closer. And now, mile by mile, league by league, we are being drugged into this light year by light year. We are so close now. It's just total, total orgy of evil. And, and, and we've got to stand up and say no, 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 no. And you'll notice the evil will scurry and go find victims that bow to it. I'm telling you, these people are cowards, but they're dangerous in large hordes. Okay, I'm going to shut up and go to Lindsey Williams. Lindsey, I'm going to try to shut up now. Recap, uh, go back and recap what, what he said was coming. A former oil company CEO, Bilderberg Group level. And then what's going to unfold, what really happened in the debate, what happened in last night's, because obviously they're scripted from different angles of the power structure. Dr. Corsi was on yesterday, of course, not just State Department folks, extremely high-level national security, I'll just leave it at that, uh, saying, yes, the elite are mad at Obama. He did double-cross him with the Arabs. Uh, that's confirming what you're saying. And, and, then, and that's a double-cross on the Arabs as well. Uh, just very sophisticated what's happening, double-crossing us to the Chinese, uh, again, not just the elite, but the American people, that he's even bad to the old elite. That's scary. So so you've got the floor and what you didn't get into, and the big one, dollar collapse this year, what that means, according to your source, coming up here in just a few months. Uh, Lindsey Williams. Purchase your long-term storage, uh, long storage food as fast as you can. Now, I said a moment ago that I was told back two years ago there'd be no shortage of food and water on the grocery store shelves, but that you'll go hungry. And I wondered what in the world it was talking about. Basically, the currency that you have is going to diminish in its purchasing power to the point that you won't be able to buy it, even though the grocery store shelves are full. People laughed at me at the time and said, oh, Chaplin, there's going to be shortages on the grocery store shelves. Now, we've gone by two years. It's happened exactly as they told me. Please, folks believe what these people have to say. One year ago, 
I came out in a series that I prepared entitled 2012, The Beginning of the End, and in it, I said that they had a number of agendas. I need to warn you about one of these. Please, I beg of you, I hope you have pencils and paper. You're writing this down. Put it down beside your calendar, and then later you're going to say, Lindsay Williams is a prophet, and I'm going to tell you, no, I'm not. I just got it from them. They said that one of their agendas in 2012, and this extends on in 2013, is fear. Yeah, so simple. You say, but but why fear? Listen, they want to do everything in their power to persuade you that we're about to have a terrorist attack, that we're going to have major, major problems here and yonder. They tried to tell you that when the Olympics took place in London, that at the opening ceremonies there's going to be a terrorist attack, and thousands might die, and they scared the daylights out of you. Now, I went to Dr. David Yonder, and I said, David, I've been told that this is one of their agendas for this year. You know who David Yonder is, has his own radio show, uh, practicing physician, very prominent man, has a, spoken before Congress on the health care bill. And I said, David, what is the real truth about this? He said, Chaplain, any time a person gets afraid, their brain shuts down. I said, Dave, David, that's it. They want to do everything in their power to shut the brains down of the people so that they can't think for themselves. Folks, oh, do not look for black helicopters. Don't look behind bushes everywhere you go. You cannot allow them to scare you with homeland security and terrorist attacks. It is, there hasn't been a single terrorist attack since 9-11. What in the world? Can't you see what's going on and realize what the elite are doing to you? They want you to shut your brain down so that you... Okay, this brings me to the next one. Alex, you said to recap it. I'm trying to do it as fast as I can because I know you've got a lot of things to say, too. They announced on September the 13th, 2012, the Federal Reserve would purchase $40 billion in mortgage-backed securities every month indefinitely. I told you what they were going to do with those mortgage-backed securities. It's your house, the shopping center down the street, the small business that got its loan using real estate as collateral for the loan. And I told you that I'd been told by my elite friend that the Federal Reserve is going to take your house mortgage and all of those other mortgage-backed securities and invest them in the derivative market at a fractionally reserved rate. Then I told you also on Tuesday what was so startling that I don't think Alex had even heard before because I don't know if any newsletter that's picked up on this yet because they didn't call the same people I called, that the institutions that they will be giving this $40 billion to every month, J.P. Morgan, Chase, Citibank, Bank of America, Goldman Sachs, Wells Fargo, Fannie Freddie, that $40 billion they have in their hands and behind closed doors secretively, they have already made the agreement that these institutions will purchase treasuries. They will not put it into the real estate market, the economy, nor the recession. They are not going to help the economy come out of the problems it's in. They are buying $40 billion worth of T-bills every month. Now, I'm going to give you the one that goes along with what I just said. Fear, please, folks, I didn't give this on Tuesday. I didn't have time. I, in the course of the conversation, after we had gone over all the things that the Federal Reserve is doing, listen, folks, this is the most dastardly act that has ever been perpetrated on the American people in the history of this country. It took place on September the 13th, 2012, and they will own every piece of mortgage real estate in the United States of America. And after I got through hearing all of this, I was so flabbergasted. I was dumbfounded. You know who I was talking to. And this is I where I wanted to. Uh, 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 years. This is where and I wanted I, to. Lindsay, this is where I wanted to intersect here, listening to Pastor Lindsay Williams with his whistleblower connections into the elite that have proven to be extremely accurate, and I know who his sources are. This is where we ended last time. I want to go back into some of the other points, but specifically to get what you're saying here, Lindsay, and we know they're doing this. This is actually admitted, and it's actually over $80 billion. Of 40 something million is to buy a month bonds, treasuries. The other $40 billion is to go in and buy uh, these mortgage-backed securities that are already crud. They are leveraging them. The general derivatives market is ramping up to levels above 2008 at its last peak. So what he's telling you is confirmed. But the issue is you're saying if they're now investing other people's good mortgages, when that goes belly up, then the government will say, well, now you pay your mortgage to us. And we've seen this with all the nationalizations going on. But that's what he's saying is coming.
both toxic and not and non toxic mortgages are being bought. They're mixing them all together. A Chinaman may own your house. A Japanese may own your house. A Russian may own your house. You don't own it anymore. It is no longer in the hands of that local institution where you got your loan from. Now, I'm going to give you the next one. I, Alex, please, bear with me just a second here. In the course, after I got through talking about all of this, and I was so at my wit's end, I began to have a normal one-on-one -on -one conversation with my friend. And this one is going to startle you. Beyond, beyond I, I, in the course of the conversation, I'll put it in my words, we basically said, what did the elite learn? Folks, oh, please, please, you, you, you must hear this. What did the elite learn from Thursday, September the 13th of 2012? Now, there is no newsletter that will probably ever publish this. This man was talking friends one-on-one -on -one from 35 years ago relationship, and basically the elite learned on September the 13th of 2012, that Thursday, they learned, folks, they learned that the American people are not going to protest. This, this, this is horrible. They learned from that experience. You see, they learn things, too. They don't know what to expect out of you. They learn you're not going to protest. They learn you are not going to revolt. Are you catching this? They learn that you are not going to riot. They purchase your house out of thin air, $40 billion every month from now on until they own every piece of mortgage real estate in the United States of America. They have learned that you, I'm going to put it in my words, I want to embarrass you. I mean embarrass you good. They have learned you're not going to belly up. They have learned that you are going to become slaves to their new world order system and that they can bring it in and that you will not do what Greece has done. They're going to continue to give you your wealth. Please, please, this is a prediction based on what my elite friend told me. They're going to continue to give you your welfare checks. They're going to continue to give you your social security checks. They aren't going to be cut off. I don't care which man puts it, is being put in. They are going to continue to give you your... Uh, your Medicare and your Medicaid, none of these things are going to be cut off. You will have those for the next few years, mark my words. But they have learned that if they do these things, you are not going to protest. You're not going to follow what Alex Jones is saying. You're not going to revolt. You're not going to riot in the streets. You're going to belly up. You're going to give in. They can bring in their new world order system according to the plans that they have of total takeover of the United States of America. They'll buy your house, turn around, rent it back to you while they deteriorate the purchase of the currency that you've got to the point that you can't afford to make your house payment so they can repossess it. Alex, I was so startled in the course of the latter part of that conversation until I am still sitting here. I'm sure you must hear it in my voice. You remarked. No, I've never heard you so wound up. I've never heard you so wound up. But, but what, what freaks me out, Lindsay, is I know who your source is. I know who the other one was who died, and we can say his name now, Ken Fromm, uh, this other guy even more high-powered. Uh, and to sit here and, 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 and see them saying all this, um, because they particularly don't really like what's happening, but they're in the higher councils of power where all this is being discussed. All of it is actually in the financial papers. This is all hiding in plain view. Have you seen the video, but I also have the Financial Times of London, Associated Press, Time Magazine, Newsweek, Economist Magazine. I've read them on air. We, we, we wrote an article for the first issue of the magazine. Uh, bankers bragged that they've conquered America and Europe, where they said, and we have literally more than 20 quotes in newspapers, that they have conquered us, a global group of banks, through fraud. And even on CNBC, they brag, yes, we've conquered you with foreign uh, mega banks. America is run by a new world order global government. I mean, they're now trumpeting it, I guess, to test us to see if we're going to accept it. Uh, did you ever see that CNBC clip? Yes, I've seen a number of videos. And Alex, we cannot let it happen. You at InfoWars, you listen, you asked me a question on Tuesday. And I've never heard you ask a personal question like that over the radio before. Uh, usually you'd ask that off air. And I said, Alex, you've got an annoying. God has put you here for a purpose. The only reason the world info wars is growing in leaps and bounds is because you are the man on the hour sitting right here on the wall. And God, God, you heard me. I said, God has given you a place and an audience and is using you. And we cannot allow the new world order to do what they want to do. Now, here's the next prediction, folks. 
please. You need to hear this. Seven months ago. Now, I haven't been on your show, Alex, in well over seven months, so it wasn't said on your show. But I said it on radio shows all across this land. I said seven months ago that I'd just been told by my elite friend when I called him up on the phone, and I said, why did the uh, president cancel out on the cross count of the pipeline? He was so livid, he was beside himself. I've never heard the man talk like he talked on the phone. He said, Chaplain, we are so angry at Mr. Obama, you cannot possibly imagine. And he went on to tell what's going to happen. And, and uh, uh, just a few weeks later, they said, Chaplain, if the older, are you catching this, folks? If the older elite have anything to do with it, Obama will not be the next president of the United States of America. Folks, don't you call me a prophet after the election. I'm telling you, watch that debate. There were three things in it. You must go back and look at it. And there were three things that Mr. Romney said that literally Mr. Obama went ballistic. Write them down. Number one, cross counter the pipeline. You'll hear him say it. He was brief to say it. Secondly, Dodge Frank bill. And in it is the Consumer Finance Protection Bureau. And he said, we will rewrite that bill. This was a slap in the face of Obama because he saw it pushed through Congress when it shouldn't have been. And then there was the production of American oil. And when those three things were said, Obama literally lost it like a child that had been caught with his hand in the cookie jar. And he became completely uh, he was out of it. He literally could not put his words together from that point through the rest of the debate. Every bit of it because he realizes now that he's in big, big trouble. Folks, watch out. There's some things out there the elite are so angry about, and we need – you must know the issues, Alex. Okay, we've got to go to break here, Lindsay, but – uh, we're going to play that Ron Paul clip where he said we should panic and also the CNBC haven't played in a month or so where they announced we're slaves to foreign banks and, and global government. Those are quotes. We're going to play those. But we got 20 seconds, 30 seconds, Lindsay. Uh, real fast, uh, tell me uh, some of the other points we didn't get to that we're going to cover as well that we missed out earlier in the week while we've had you back. What are a few of those? Okay, I'm going to give you must have pencil and paper. During the break, pick them up and get them to the phone. I'm going to give you the countdown for the death of the dollar. You've been hearing me say this for the past three years that I was told by my friend the dollar will be dead by the end of 2012. Many of you are beginning to wonder right now. I can still go to the grocery store and buy groceries. Yeah, we're going to do a countdown. We're going to do uh, 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 Devil's Messiah. They're taking over the churches. And we're going to get into last night's debate as well with Lindsey Williams. Stay with us. Uh, look, when I start the next hour, I will cover some of our other top stories briefly and then go back to Lindsay and your phone calls. He's with us now. But I don't like to mention, hey, we have a video of national television saying vaccines with mercury are good for your kids without playing it. But I've played it probably 200 times over the last five years. So I'm not going to play it. You can look that up. But this Ron Paul I've only played a few times. This is Ron Paul on that September day when they announced the unlimited QE, giving trillions in the aggregate to foreign banks. And then saying, you've got to pay that back as a taxpayer. And they're going to hit you with the inflation it causes. So here is that clip of Ron Paul saying panic. And see, the one thing that Bernanke has not achieved that frustrates him, I can tell, is he gets no economic growth. He doesn't do anything with the unemployment numbers. And from my viewpoint, I think the country should have panicked over the fact of what the Fed is saying that we've lost control and the only thing we have left is massively creating new money out of thin air which hasn't worked before and it's not going to work this time and by the way that was uh, over a month ago that this happened and they've now said that qe failed well it didn't fail to transfer money to the globalist okay uh but but now the inflation has really ticked up because of this even though most of it's only going to the rich it's called i mean they're really wealthy that's why luxury items are just i mean they are just stratospheric now here's a clip i mentioned with lindsay of cnbc where they say aren't we slaves to global government to banks now again the adl says i'm basically mr evil for even talking about this but but here it is on the news uh, here's that clip so mostly what they do is hold summits 
I think that right now the question is, do we all work for central bankers? That's what I want to address to our guest tonight. Is this global governance at last? Is it one world, the central bankers in charge? Jim, Jim Urio, you say we've got some downside here, a correction in the markets. Fine. But aren't we all just living and dying for what the central banks do? Aren't we all just counting on the fact that there's a Bernanke put, put and that we won't go any lower than, say, 5% uh, down from here? Of course we are, because if we look at the economic data, there's nothing to get excited about. In okay, that. good job. That's enough. And again, it goes on for like five minutes. I'm all, yes, we're slaves to foreign banks, world government. That's just the way it is. And I hear this on Bloomberg, you name it. Lindsay, this is a short segment. Long segments are coming up. We'll, get, we'll give the number out in the next hour. But uh, your take on what Ron Paul said versus these guys saying we're slaves to world government run by banks. I mean, that's the new world order right there. Uh, a year ago, Alex, I was on many shows, and I might have even been on yours, and I said, I will tell you every three months, according to what my elite friend says, whether there will be a financial collapse in the next three months or not. Came in January, I called him on the phone. He said, no, Chaplin, it's not going to be any financial collapse January, February, March. End of March, I went back again. He said, no, not in April. I'm going to make another prediction right now. No, I'm sticking the neck way out. There will be no financial collapse through December of 2012. Are you hearing what I am saying? But there is going to be a deterioration in the purchasing power of your currency like you have never seen before, proportionately to $40 billion every month. Being uh, for our thin air, purchasing mortgage-backed securities, they are getting making, uh, they're, they're getting sawn and mortar. They're getting the roof over your head. They're getting the land you own, and for nothing while you worked for it, pull it out of thin air. What are they going to do? They are going. To, please catch it. I was told it a year ago. I said it right here. I think on on Info Wars. They are intentionally postponing the collapse of the currencies of the world until they can create such massive debt in every nation, every city, every county, every state, until when they finally get it to the point that the dollar has collapsed to the place that you can hardly afford the food to put on your table, much less pay your house mortgage. They'll step in and say, you have no choice. You will have to accept our new currency. We have it ready. And then they will pose as the saviors, SDRs, 100 trillion of taxpayer liquidity davos switzerland one year ago you're absolutely right it's their master plan they won't pull it off unless they think we'll go along with it i'm gonna post this in its entirety with a link back to the examiner because it's so good she took uh statements by paul watson statements by myself uh and then linked back to mainstream news and admissions of the uh, left really being a bunch of hitler lovers uh, and loving mass extermination and death, uh, and it ties into Bill Maher saying, you know, kill, kill people, get rid of more people, so eat less people on the highway. That article is uh, going to be going up at Infowars.com. Bill Maher blasted for saying kill the right people, and she took the quotes I made in historical statements I made, along with Paul Watson, I just love this, and she went and found out we were telling the truth and put links to mainstream news. That's what I'm looking for right there. Because I don't just sit here and shoot my mouth off. I make mistakes sometimes. I wish I made more mistakes because let me tell you, I don't make a lot. It, 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 when I make all these wild statements, folks, I'm not just making wild statements. <laughs> Reality is wild, okay? Uh, so um, Bill Maher blasted for saying kill the right people. We're going to get uh, this uh, article by Terry Webster posted up at Infowars.com so you can see it. And, of course, I'm plugging it here on air. Uh, so you can go over to TheExaminer.com and check that out as well. Uh, okay, let's go back. This is a short segment. I'll get the number out in the next segment and go right to your call. So if you're ready, just stand by. We'll give the number out at the, at, uh, the start of the next segment. Not yet. Uh, Lindsay, uh, stay there because I want you to come back and, 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 and get into the countdown to the collapse, kind of restart, and then we'll go to calls for the balance of the hour. But after we take some calls, because I promised to go to him, what are some of the other tidbits he's told you that we haven't gotten to yet? I mean, maybe you, know, you started mentioning with the break cut you off you know, 40 minutes ago. Uh, about uh, what you were told would happen with last night's debate. Uh, give us your uh, breakdown on that briefly. Well, last night's debate actually produced, produced nothing. It was just complete chaos from beginning to end. I was watching for all the buzzwords that might be there. I had actually had an email yesterday morning from my elite friend whom you know and basically was warned 
that Biden and Romney, neither one, I'm sorry, that uh, the, the candidates last night, vice presidential candidates, they actually did not have buzzwords that they were throwing at each other. So as a result, the, uh, base, the debate basically turned, in, turned into total chaos. Now, uh, let me cover the Middle East right quick. I know this is a short segment. Folks, please, the Middle East, you are going to see... Uh, you're going to see uh, disruptions. You are going to see war. You're going to see more chaos created than you can possibly imagine. Right now, it's Syria. Then it's going to be Yemen. You must go to YouTube and look up retired General Wesley Clark. Please go to YouTube and see this for yourself. Retired General Wesley Clark made a, a speech some while back, and he named almost identically the same nations that were given to me a year a year and a half ago when I produced my DVD series, The Middle East, The Rest of the Story, which only about half of it has taken place, by the way. And he told the nations which the chaos would be created in, how our State Department would work with al-Qaeda and the Muslim Brotherhood, and the last nation is the one that's important. Wesley Clark said the last nation to be touched will be Saudi Arabia. Watch it. You're going to see more and more chaos begin to be generated in Saudi Arabia which is our number one supplier of crude oil abroad. In the meantime, you're going to see Yemen fall. Syria is right on the verge of it. Assad miserable get out while he's still alive. Then you'll see Yemen. Then you're going to see problems in one or two other small countries. And then they're going to hit the big one because they want to take the price of crude oil to $150 a barrel. And then they want to bring in America's oil field. Saudi Arabia will be the last one touched. Wesley Clark, retired general, said that. He's confirmed that. You know what? Stay there because you said two years ago they do this in the Middle East and it happened. And, and, and I don't even have the staff or crew to go back and pull those clips up. But you, you put out some audio and videos, that uh, specials that have broken that down. So we'll also talk about some of the different things you've put out where it's enshrined on record. But your predictions are also right there at lindsaywilliams.net, an excellent fan site that has it all chronologically ordered. But I want to recap the Middle East and then the countdown to dollar death. And we are back, blasting out worldwide another hour, defending liberty, attempting to awaken the sleeping giant that is free humanity. I'm your host, Alex Jones. Pastor Lindsey Williams is with us for the balance of the hour. He's been on for part of the last hour. We're going to open the phones up, coming up at the start of the next segment for Lindsey Williams. For any questions or comments, he's an author, researcher, a retired Baptist preacher who uh, got into the major boardroom uh, meetings as a member of the board of a multi-oil uh, company um, system and uh, has several big oil company executive uh, sources, including one known by me um, and confirmed to be one of his sources, a former CEO of Big Three, who's been giving him amazingly accurate info over the years. Like, gas will go from 50 bucks a barrel to 150. Now it's going to go down to 40, and everybody laughed at him and it happened. He said two years ago, they'll attack the Middle East uh, through proxy wars and revolutions. Boom, it started a year later. Uh, now it's getting crazier and crazier. He said, that's a diversion for China. Then he said, they're going to double cross the Saudi Arabians finally, uh, who they you know get to, quote, buy dollars, but then they have to agree to not develop U.S. oil. But now Obama has double crossed them, blocking development of North American oil. That's the type of sophisticated geopolitical stuff that's going on. We're going back to Lindsay to finish his countdown to the implosion of the dollar. He said it wouldn't be last year, and QE3 wouldn't be last year when everybody says it was going to be then, even Ron Paul and others. And he, now he said it would be this year, last year, and it happened. So I hope he's wrong because it's creepy, and it lines up with what Max Kaiser's saying. And the elite could change their plans, but they don't often. So we're going to talk about ways to also try to stop that. In fact, I want to put a note there to make sure I cover that, how to stop it. Some of the other news before we go back to Lindsey Williams here. This is a big deal. And because it's been going on for a year and a half in Libya and now nine months in Syria, we just become punch drunk to it. Moscow accused of arms supply to Syria. And again, the West is shipping in guns and Al-Qaeda out of Jordan, out of uh, Turkey, out of other areas on record. Uh, engaging in all sorts of war crimes. I'm not on Syria or Moscow side, but I'm not on the banker's side using our military who they now admit are battling Russian spitznats as advisors. That's now in the news. We told you that six, seven months ago, started nine months ago. It's in the news now. Our troops are fighting Russians in a proxy war in Syria to remove Assad and put Al-Qaeda in like they've done in Libya. 
And I told you a year ago, I said, look, they've killed Gaddafi. They put Al-Qaeda in. Watched in a year, they'll be saying we got to be there to take out Al-Qaeda. Now they're doing that like you have no memory. Now, Lindsay's going to talk about that in a moment. He was talking about it as we went to break. He predicted it all. He said they're going to put the Muslim brother in the hood. They're going to do all this. But that's meant to overthrow Saudi Arabia later. And they're bringing down uh, Russian aircraft, passenger liners, beating up the passengers in Turkey because there's ammunition on board. Hijacking aircraft, that's what it is. I mean, this is just getting absolutely insane uh, that all of this is happening. Uh, here's some of the other news. Turkey, Syria plane was carrying ammunition. AP, so it deserves to be brought down. Uh, an international... Uh, zone. Video from Benghazi consulate shows organized attack. Oh, really? We need the government to tell us that? Again, the same Al-Qaeda they put in charge. That is just some of the news we have here. And then right on time, Iran with no evidence is supposedly attacking the cyber systems. So the Pentagon that's already taken over the internet, who created the internet, says, oh, we've got to get rid of your freedom. We've got to take over the web because of this. Uh, U.S. hackers in Iran responsible for cyber attacks Secretary of Defense uh, Leon Panetta agrees. Panetta's cyber stunner, Washington Guardian, in a blunt admission designed to prod action, an, an executive order because Congress won't do it. Defense Secretary uh, Panetta Thursday night told business executives there's been a sudden escalation in cyber terrorism and that attackers have managed to gain access to control systems for critical infrastructure. Critical infrastructure is not hooked up to the Internet. That's why when they put Stuxnet into the Iranian systems, they had to have Israeli spies put it in with thumb drives into the industrial computers. Uh, but again, we just played last hour where they said the Smoky Mountains are smoky because of smog and they need taxes on the locals because of it when the Indians called it the Smoky Mountains 500 years ago. Oh, boy, it is making my head spin at this point. And then I've got news like this out of the Associated Press. They're breaking down the fact that they're now coming out with drones that refuel in midair. The TSA's also showed up at a Mitt Romney campaign stop to forcibly grope people. TSA lends a helping, groping hand uh, to Mitt Romney campaign stop. And then this one I haven't even gotten to yet, but we're going back to Lindsay to finish up and then go to your calls. Elbert County man seeks millions for terrorist comment. When I saw this uh, this morning on prisonplanet.com, I knew Paul wouldn't say it unless it was in the news, but I was still shocked. And then I went to the Denver Post and there are the quotes. It's on video in the, in the, in the city council meeting. Disabled vet labeled terrorist for investigating cost of surveillance cameras. And he, he's been coming and complaining that they're putting up cameras all over the town. And so they said, well, we've seen you on tape filming him. You're barred from the city council because you're a terrorist. And it's a quote. It's in the news and they're defending it. I mean, this is how they shut down your free speech. Oh, you filmed the cameras. You're, no, you're a terrorist. No judge, no jury. You're just a terrorist. Characterization was reprisal for open records request. Charges uh, Elbert County man. We want to get him on. We called up uh, his lawyer this morning and are working on that. A 55-year-old disabled veteran was labeled a terrorist by three county commissioners after he photographed security cameras at Elbert County. I said city council, it's county commissioners. Administration building in Colorado as part of an investigation, a designation the man claimed was retribution for filming. And the commissioners are in the Denver Post defending it. They say it's terrorism and this, they say it's, quote, scary to see a citizen with a camera. So, no, I'm just... Send him to a re-education camp. Okay, I'm going to shut up now. More news coming up, but I had to get to all that. Lindsey Williams, get into what's happening in the Middle East. Your source told you this would happen. But, the, but, but how that nexus is of how Obama's getting off the plan and why the elite, at least the section of the elite you're talking about, I'm glad they differentiate. There's different power structures vying for control. They never dismantle the police state because they, they're fighting over who gets to run it, but... That's the real danger is the bureaucracy itself getting out of control historically. But but getting back to that, recapping that, and then the countdown to dollar death, and then as I promise, phone calls, Pastor Lindsey Williams. You must know the signs, please. Uh, I hope you're catching this. Back not too long ago, uh, my elite friend said, Chaplain, uh, I want to tell you how you can save your dinner table and how you can help spare your family. Now, folks, keep something in mind. 
back in 1929 through 1933, there were there were many people who made great fortunes. Not everybody stood in soup lines in New York and Chicago and, and Los Angeles. There were many people who made it because they knew in advance it was going to happen. I am trying my best. I've done it for 35 years to try to help you know what the elite tell me that their plans are as planned behind closed doors. That's the reason that I am telling you everything that they have told me. You must know the signs. Please go to lindsaywilliams.net, even though it's not my website. I hope you will look at Secrets of the Elite. It's not copywritten, three and a half hours of DVD. Now, you have that pencil and paper. I've warned you. You needed to get it. You've had time to get it. Now, here it is. I need you to write these down. You heard me make a statement. Uh, nearly two years ago, and Alex, it's in your archives, by the end of 2012, the dollar will be dead. You heard me say that. And many of you now saying, oh, wait a minute, I can still go to the grocery store and buy everything I want with the dollar. It's not dead yet. Uh-uh. No. I'm going to give you the facts. You ready? Write them down. Here. Here's the first one. February of 2012, the largest trade agreement that was ever signed in the history of the world was signed between China and Japan, China being the second largest economy in the world, Japan being the third, and they said we are going to sell and trade products amongst ourselves. You know nearly everything comes from China now. We're going to sell and trade products amongst ourselves, and we will not use the American dollar for the sale and trade of those products. Next, China and Russia. September the se Write the dates down. Please go look these up, folks. You've got to know the signs. I've tried to give them to you on our DVD. I'm trying to help you now. China and Russia on September the 7th of 2012. You'll find it in the China Daily. There's an article about it. They signed an agreement that they will sell and trade products amongst each other. They will not use the American dollar. As long as you and I have known, the dollar has been the reserve currency of the world. It has been the petrodollar. I'll give you the next one. China and Brazil. Go look on BBC, British Broadcasting, at their article. They have agreed on a huge currency swap between China and Brazil. They will not use the American dollar any longer for the sale and trade of their products. China and Australia, I have to give them to you in a hurry. We've got to get these in fast. Look in Financial Express. You'll, that's the article you'll find on China and Australia. They have made an agreement amongst themselves. They'll sell and trade. will not use the American dollar. India and Japan routers, routers news service had this large currency swap, no longer using each other uh, American currency. The dollar, come on, is dead. Yeah, again, look at this one. And this took place on April the 27th of 2012. Go look them up. India and China is buying oil from Iran, and they will not use the American dollar in the purchase of that. This has never happened before in the history of crude oil. Next one, Iran and Russia. Look at it in Bloomberg. You'll find the article. And they said, we're not going to use the American dollar any longer. Of course, America won't let them use it now because of the sanctions. China and Chile signed a new agreement just the other day. You'll find this uh, out there also on the news wires. I'm going to give them to you. Here's the other one. China and the United Arab Emirates. Look on CNN. You'll find the article on it. They are not going to use the American dollar any longer. China and Africa. Did you realize that Africa's largest bank? Come on now. Look it up. Standard Bank of Africa. You'll find the article on what they did, and they said we will... China is the number one trade partner with Africa now. They buy so many things from them. They're not going to use the American dollar any longer for sale and trade of their products. Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa called BRICS on April the 5th of 2012, said we will no longer use the American dollar for the sale and trade of our products. The last one. You ready? This one just happened. Just happened the other day. September the 6th, 2012, China official, folks, please, I just got this. China officially announced that any country in the world that wishes to sell crude oil using its currency, instead of the U.S. dollar, can do so now because they have everything set up. And as of the next day, now they made that, uh, that announcement on September the 6th. On September the 7th, the next day, Russia announced 
that the nation, Russia, will sell China all of the crude oil it needs, no limitations whatsoever. They will not use the American dollar. Folks, please listen to me. You say the dollar's not dead. I say to you, the dollar is already dead, and you don't know it. Let me show you why. All of these trillions of American dollars, they're out there unused, unwanted. They're coming home. How long does it take them to come home? Six to eight months. Mark my words. Six to eight months from now, you are going to see the most devastating situation that you have ever seen in the United States of America. Trillions and trillions and trillions of dollars from all of these that I just named to you. You've listed them. You've got them down now. And this, this currency is unused, unwanted. It's floating around. It's going to return home like the chickens coming home to roost. And it will take six to eight months, folks. The dollar is already dead, and you don't know it. Alex, can I say it in a planner? Well, Lindsay, I tried to give you the floor there to break it down, and I wish that the evidence wasn't clear of what you're saying. Uh, it doesn't mean that the former top big three oil company CEO is infallible, but I got to say about 95% of what he said has come true that we've covered here in the last uh, six, seven years. And he normally conferred with Mr. Fromm, the other executive who, of course, died about a year and a half ago for those that just joined us. Uh, but everything you're talking about integrates or dovetails in with the research I have. Uh, China and others are already getting away from the dollar to buy oil. Uh, all The BRICS countries are moving away from it. And I don't think they would have gone to QE Unlimited if they didn't understand that the dollar was already going to die anyways, because it will kill it. Uh, I mean, your source could be wrong. Um, if, you know, they do a few different things to stave it off, it might not go completely belly up by December, as your source is saying. But going to QE Unlimited, as Ron Paul said last hour here, we should be, quote, panicking because it will kill the dollar. Uh, but I agree, the Chinese moving faster and faster out of it, and they basically, before the last few years, had one leg in, one leg out. Now they've got basically both feet out, but it will take time for those to come back into the country. And that's why with all the dollars, these countries, China isn't buying dollars anymore, our biggest holder of debt. The globalists uh, you know, designed it that way. Uh, they uh, still hold a lot of them, and they're buying the biggest movie chains, the biggest movie production houses. They're buying up the real estate. The communist Chinese government is, not their poor slaves. And so we sold out our birthright for baubles. But uh, it's only a few trillion dollars that the Chinese owned. The bankers maneuvered us into that. Uh, and uh, you're right. They want us in debt. That's why they loan Europe money to pay off debt the bankers created derivatives because it's all fiat to begin with. And, you know, Max Kaiser talked to um, the head of the Forbes dynasty, Steve Forbes, a few months ago in Greece. And he bragged and said, yeah, we're going to take everything over. I mean, they don't even hide this. I tuned into Bloomberg Financial. Uh, on, on XM, and I listen to it quite a lot when I'm driving home late at night, and they have all these big head guys on there. There's always rear and stuff from the morning at night, and they just brag, yeah, it's world government. They're not going to stop us. We're going to implode everything. They don't even hide it is what's frustrating. And then, uh, you know, you talk to people in the general public. They have no idea what's in store for them, Lindsay. I want to go to phone calls, the toll-free number to join us. Is 800 259 9231. And we'll get you up and on the air uh, for questions for Lindsey Williams. But I just hope there's ways to avert this. And, and, and we'll talk about that before you leave. I've got a list of things I want to cover. But in the interest of actually getting to calls, the reason we have you back today, uh, let's go to Dan in Pennsylvania. You're on the air with uh, Pastor Williams. Go ahead. Uh, yes. Alex, can you hear me? Yes, I can, sir. Yes. God bless you to both of you. Um, my question is for Mr. Williams there. Um, when the dollar is devalued, um, what will happen when you go to pay for your mortgage and the uh, devalued money? Will they still be taking those payments? Do you see what I mean? Yeah, some countries, they will they will raise the, the amount of the, the note by an act of government. But a lot of times, that's why it actually helps the rich and, 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 and upper middle class, because usually they'll just let you pay off the debt with the devalued currency. So it really hurts the poor and people on fixed incomes more than anybody. Lindsay? Well, the dollar's already dead, and your currency is already devalued, and you haven't realized it yet. 
1966, I went to a bank in Florida. I happened to live in Hollywood, Florida at the time. I was a pastor of a church there. And I went in Miami, Florida, put a $1 Federal Reserve note on the counter in 1966 and asked them for a silver dollar, and they gave me one. Today, you've got to pay 40 of those. Do you not realize that your currency is already devalued and that you can barely make it? Yeah, say that again. In, in the 1960s. All of this devaluation at the rate of proportionate to $40 billion every month. Yeah, yeah, let's go back um, to that and explain it to people. In the 1960s, you can get a silver dollar for a dollar, a Federal Reserve note. But in 2012, it takes 40 of them. I mean, you're right. They've already devalued it, but it's about to go hyperinflationary. People say, well, if it's only got 2% of the value it had in 1913 when the Federal Reserve took over, why do I care then? The 2% is what I know because they're going to go past that. At a certain point, it becomes like Zimbabwe or Weimar Republic where it takes wheelbarrows of $100 bills to buy a chicken McNugget. There's one sign, you positively must know it, and if you haven't made a crash course on it, you've got to do it immediately. The derivative market is the indicator as to when the dollar will be totally collapsed, and you must know how to discern the derivative market, not the stock market, not Wall Street, not the euro. You've got yeah, that's all child's play. The that's derivative market. Okay, we'll stay there. I'm going to put that in there. Is something we're going to cover as solutions, derivative market. But 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 asking his question specifically because no one really knows. But the insiders, the word we get is they're going to just keep notes at the price they were. But new notes, cars, houses, business loans are going to be stratospheric interest. Correct. Uh, well, I, the interest hasn't gone up yet. In fact, that was the last point that my lead friend told me. He said, Chaplin, the last indicator that you will ever have just before the derivative market collapses and which will bring all the currencies of the world down with it, they said will be the Federal Reserve will announce an interest rate hike. He said whenever that happens, it's too late. If you haven't gotten out of paper by that time, you've lost it. He said, Chaplin, you can't wait that late. You've got to know. No, exactly. But let's explain this. The They've gotten everybody globally. They've gotten everybody globally in this. They've imploded the, the economy to a certain degree to get people deeper into debt. And when they finally pull the trigger, they're going to come out and say, we have global cards, SDRs, backed by the UN and the euro at the core. Carbon taxes and other taxes will fund it. Here is your new digital SDR, and people will beg for it. And that's their plan. That's the global government takeover plan. That's exactly right. In fact, they'll have their new currency already. Now, please, I'm going to tell you exactly what I've been told. They're going to back it with gold and silver. It'll be a new world order currency. They're forgetting about the marrow. They bypassed the marrow. Did you catch it? They bypassed the marrow. They're going directly to a one world currency. They must take gold to $3,000 an ounce before they can back the new currency because that's what they have sure, to Sure, Dan, the Dan, stay there. Gold will go to $75 an ounce. Okay, we're going to break that down, too, but we've got to get to calls. Uh, Dan, did that answer your question? Well, I'm just wondering, because X amount of dollars for... No, no, I, I, yeah, for I understand, like sir, but I, I think we did answer from a bunch of different angles. We'll be right back. Stay with us. Lindsey Williams is our guest. I want to try to hurry through your calls uh, here and uh, break this down and then get into some solutions and also the point about what to look for in the derivatives market from his source. But he's right. The beginning of the end of the dollar has begun. They have to do that to bring in the new global currency. But just like they can have 20 different types of Texas Monthly uh, or 20 different types, I meant to say, of uh, Sports Illustrated, where Texas gets a version and then this group of states gets a version, you're going to have a global card still going to say your country on it. It's going to have digital creds on it, and you can put other currencies into it. It's just that they'll be devalued, so they'll buy you less creds on it. And then all new future transactions will be based in strategic drawing rights, which are just an IMF World Bank digital currency they make up. And they can buy gold with it. They can buy oil with it. They can buy weapons. They can buy media. It, it's just the bankers are God. They have a magic wand. Everything's theirs. And uh, we noticed two years ago, when, because we buy postage to ship stuff overseas in bulk, uh, and it prints it on the labels, we have post office printers, in SDRs. And we went and looked it up, and yeah, it's already under strategic drawing rights. It's not under euros, it's not under, it's not under pounds, it's not under any of this. It's not under dollars. 
and they admit all of it. That's what's so frustrating. You can debate about when it's coming. Uh, and the average yuppie, even people that are in the stock market, they have no idea. You know, I saw a report a few days ago, the stock market's been flat for 10 years. No, it hadn't. They show the graphs of it perfectly flat. You didn't gain $1 in it. Well, actually, it's way down because it's global devalued currencies are buying those stocks. So it's actually down by about a third uh, conservatively. But some people say, well, I still make money in it. And, and that's true. If you're an insider or you're really smart and you know how to go beat the tables at Vegas, yes, you can win. Or you might just be lucky. Uh, but they've got all the pension funds, all of it invested. They've got us where they want us. Now, before Lindsey Williams leaves us, uh, also, we're going to uh, tell you about his latest documentaries and latest uh, free audio CD that goes with those. You can go to prophecyclub.com to find all his stuff or lindseywilliams.net to find it. But we'll also give you the toll-free number and tell you all about that before he leaves us. But let's go quick now. John in Ohio. John, you're on the air listening via WWCR, global 100,000-watt blowtorch shortwave out of Nashville, Tennessee. And you're in Ohio. Go ahead, sir. Yeah, I disagree with the idea that uh, Obama is going off the reservation, is bucking the elite. Uh, he's doing exactly the same thing as uh, uh, Bush and uh, Romney and Ryan are doing, but he's had to do it a little slower because he has to put on a little bit of uh, a leftist uh, populist rhetoric, the opposite of what he's actually doing to please his base. And I think they're moving away from him because Obama is no longer able to fool his base. So they're just going to the stone killer uh, World Net Daily, Romney Ryan, Corsi version of this whole thing to uh, uh, not to, uh, uh, delay any of these warmongering plans uh, against Iran and the rest of the country. If you look at Obama, he uh, uh, is carrying out Wesley Clark's, uh, uh, Clark's uh, exposure, which was uh, way back in the early uh, uh, Bush uh, administration to attack all these countries. Yeah, for uh, those Obama. that don't know, we could play the clip. Clark explains, he's there at the Pentagon, they go, we're going to hit this country, then that, then this, then that. I mean, I agree Obama's a globalist, but from my sources, there are battles within the whole elite structure. I mean, Ob Obama's saying, hey, I may hit Iran to show Romney I'm tough and get elected, uh, but there's there's splits in Israel about that. I mean, there are splits in the power structure. The overall agenda, I agree, uh, moves forward. But I think U.S. troops, and now admittedly on the ground helping the Al Qaeda people, and they're actually fighting Russians and killing Russians, is just super dangerous. And both governments don't want to admit it because it's so unpopular. But Russia is not starting. Uh, the aggression here. I appreciate your call, John, uh, since you don't have questions for Lindsay. Lindsay, how does Russia tie into this? I know you, you, know, you said two years ago, watch the Middle East, it's going to go up in flames, but next is China. How does Russia fit into this? People oftentimes ask me, they say, Chaplin, do the elite control the entire world? And they said, we know they control America and Europe. I said, sure. They control Russia and China just as much as they do America. They just do it in a little different way. Now, Alex, I want to elaborate on what the caller just said just a moment ago. I want to use two words that was put to me. They said to me, they said, Obama is impulsive. He is irrational. He does not have the executive ability to be able to put something across as somebody else might. And as a result, they don't want him back in office. They said we, they really have had trouble controlling him, especially in these last two years. And now they say, hey, we, we want somebody else. Impulsive, irrational, uh, he's totally unexecutive. And uh, this is a problem that the, the elite, and especially the older elite, the younger elite have a little different idea of things, but the older elite, the ones that I knew 35 years ago, they're saying, if we have anything to do with it, we don't want him back in again. Well, what do they say about the younger elite? Well, the younger elite and the older elite have a little bit of a problem amongst each other because the younger elite naturally have these modern ideas and ways that the older ones now have children that are out there in the business world. Well, first, it's this person that you know who gives me information. He's in his 70s. He has children that are out there in the marketplace now. He's trained them as doctors and other things. And he's very concerned, believe it or not, as to how his children are going to survive in the very things that they've helped create over the years. So these people are looking at it a little different idea. And they definitely realize Well, let's just say a lot's been... Sure, a lot's been written about this. The old elite worked a lot harder, were more professional, and, and were pretty criminal but we're not as uh, generally reckless or lazy. And the newer elites really are drinking their own Kool-Aid, believe in their own propaganda, and do not work 18 hours a day. 
Uh, the new elites, you know, work about 10 hours a day and just kind of, well, they're just super wimpy. And I don't think, but but they've got all this incredible power behind them, which is a very dangerous uh, mix. Uh, let's talk. Well, Obama, Obama is, <laughs> this man is so, he's like a bull in a china shop. Uh, he has no professionalism whatsoever. And the older elite are saying, we can't put up with this another four years. Yep. All right, let's go ahead and talk to uh, Atlas in Missouri. You're on the air. Go ahead. Good afternoon, Alex. Hey, buddy. And Pastor Lindsay. One quick thing uh, to follow up on what uh, Alex said earlier about Big Pharma. And I want to give you a scriptural basis. The word uh, pharma or pharmacy. Pharmakia, which means witchcraft. Pharmaceutical, pharmaceutical, that's right. In, in the Greek, it means witchcraft and sorcery. Uh, it's only mentioned five times in the New Testament. Uh, I can give you the sources. No, I know. I know that's how I was able to quote it. Uh -huh. I, mean, I, mean, uh, I, mean, I mean, the witch doctors have always tried to put people on drugs to put them under their control. I mean, you know, corrupt elites trying to drug the tribe is as old as the hills. You know, here, take this peyote, and by the way, I'm the, I'm the boss now because I'm going to say ooga booga and make you see pretty colors. I mean, it's just all a big con game, and, uh, and we're taking calls for Lindsey Williams, my friend. Do you have a question for him? Well, yes. Vis-a-vis um, uh, -vis Amos 3-7, where Yahweh says, I would not do anything unless I first, reveal it to my servants, the prophets. And it seems to me that when the elite reveal things in the same way that Yahweh says he will reveal things. They're carrying out God's will. I appreciate your call. No, no. There's a metaphysical rule in all cultures and for all time. The vampire has to t get permission to come into your house. They, they always tell you, and, and they think it's like part of their legalese that, well, we gave you, you know, fair play on guard. It's like Force Mike comes in with a sword. You know, get on guard, on guard. And, uh, Lindsay, you want to speak to that? Yeah, one of the first things I learned when I lived with the elite those three years was they have a code of ethics, believe it or not. And one of the facets of that code of ethics is we must tell the world what we're going to do before we do it. Now, Alex, I, I readily admit that I honestly think that the elite sometimes use me to get their message out. For instance, today, I'm doing three radio shows, yours and two others. I do two and three and four per day, sometimes in the middle of the night. And they know that I'm reaching millions and millions of people across this land. Even George Norrie had me on Coast to Coast here a while back. And uh, they give me things. I'm, I'm glad I can give them to you because they're going to spare you dinner table and save you a lot of heartache. And they say some things, you better be careful about how you say them. Uh, but on the other hand, I feel a moral obligation to tell you. So that's the reason I'm here, trying my best to tell you what they say to me. Yeah, no, I've had a lot of high-powered people call me up and go, well, nobody's going to kill you right now because uh, a lot of us don't like the way things are going. We have to have balance in this. But don't go too far. You're going to be dead. And, uh, you know, stuff like that. And, I mean, that's happened many times from different uh, perspectives. So it's all double meanings with these people. And you know what it is? They like to be competitive and be corrupt and get the power. But then they see the byproduct. And they're like, ooh, maybe let's slow that down a little. And it's like, wait a minute. You wanted all this. This is what you built. Now you're ready to take your medicine. Uh, let's go to Ryan in Texas, listening on 1330 AM, AKGM. We have another caller from uh, thir uh, 1630 AM up in Dallas. I need to go up there and visit. I promised I'd come up there and speak to that whole radio audience, and I will. I've just been so busy I haven't done it, but I want to tell the program director, because I haven't talked to him in about six months, that I will get up there and do that. Uh, let's go to uh, go to Ryan, uh, listening up there in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. Ryan, go ahead. Alex, last time you came out to Dallas, it was amazing. Come back again. I'm already going to buy tickets. Just let me know. Thank you, brother. Hey, uh, I had a question for Lindsay. When he's referring to the dollar dying or essentially already being dead, is that the same as the euro? And if countries like China and Japan and Russia are getting out of the dollar, what would inspire them to get into a global currency if there's no trust already in the euro 
and in the dollar. Well, the Chinese the, are deep in bed with the globalists. The, the, they're, they're part of the even higher double cross. The Arabs are double crossed. The American people are double crossed. China is double crossed. But China is the sweetie cake of the New World Order. That's from my research, Lindsay. The elite on the folk, folk get, get these words now. The elite are not communist, and they are not Muslim. They are using the communist and the Muslim to accomplish what they want. I was told, and Alex, I said it in your show, it's on the archives, I said it three years ago, that the dollar would be dead. In fact, it was two years ago they gave it to me. The dollar will be dead by the end of 2012. Please note what they did not say. Sometimes what the elite don't say is important as what they do say. They did not say the dollar would be non-existent. Did you catch this? You're still going to have it. It's going to be like a peso, and there'll be the new global SDR that everyone has to beg to get into. That's how they get you all to want to be part of it. Not everybody gets to be part of an SDR. Oh, please, I'll do anything to be in the SDR. I'll take the card. I've got the new SDR card. Or my new iPhone has SDRs. I'm going to pay for Starbucks coffee with it. Oh, my gosh, we don't take dollars anymore. We only take global creds that are so trendy and are connected to the environment. And I'm sorry. Go ahead, Lindsay. Well, and uh, keep in mind that the new currency is going to be completely different. Our American dollar now is backed by nothing but thin air, $40 billion every month. Uh, the, new, the new world currency is going to be backed, I have told, by gold and silver. And you say, well, why will they accept it if they won't accept the dollar? The temple is one, two, three. The back is the dollar is backed by thin air now, and the new world currency will be the backed by gold and silver. That's the reason they have to take gold. Exactly, we got to move quicker here. Silver to seventy-five. Let's go back to calls here. Uh, let's take a call from John in Illinois, listening on WCKG fifteen thirty a.m. in Chicago. Go ahead, John. Hey there. I wanted to ask Pastor Williams how his elite friends view the Neil Keenan lawsuit. The Neo Keenan lawsuit. Yes. Uh, I, I have to plead ignorance on that. Uh, Neo Keenan, uh, tell us about that. Neo, N E I L, Keenan lawsuit. He is the, he has the power of attorney for the Socorno Trust that is suing, among others, the U.S. Federal Reserve and the U.S. Corporation. He has had a lien on the Federal Reserve and the U.S. Corporation for over a year. The amount of money that is in question is $55 no, 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 I, no, 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 listen, I've, I've been hearing about that for years. It's kind of like the Nacera deal. Uh, I know there are real liens and things going back. The globalists back all this up with force. They engage in pure fraud. And there's a lot of patriot mythology out there. I'm not poo-pooing what you're saying. That, that you know, There's always these magic things that are going to do this and that. Uh, Lindsey Williams, comments on that? Uh, none. I haven't heard anything about it. Yeah, I mean, you can send me some info, sir. Thank you so much for the call. Let's move quick here now. Michael in Texas, listening again on KKGM, 1630 AM in Dallas-Fort Worth. You're on the air, sir. Go ahead. Yeah, do me a favor. Turn that radio off. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, they've got uh, their radio turned up there. They just don't know. Uh, let's talk to uh, Antoine in Florida. You're on the air with Lindsey Williams. Go ahead. Hey, Alex, how you doing? I just got two quick questions for Lindsay and, uh, and for you as well. One, when will uh, the bank holiday start? Two, I think, uh, Alex, I want to challenge you on this. I, I think you're doing a great job, but I think you need to talk more on uh, about metaphysics. It seems like the globalists are using metaphysics to attack us. That's why they want to do all this fear, like Lindsay just said. And if I've I seen some of your old videos where you go along about the metaphysics, how they have all the... Um, capitals are, you know, temples. We need to know about that. We're not going to defeat them without... Well, sure, the globalists, the globalists operate with their own language, their own communication. It's like gang sign. We have to learn what those symbols mean. I mean, there's a History Channel big special called Secrets of the Secret Societies, or is it Discovery Channel? I mean, I forget. Uh, airing this Sunday, 10 o'clock. Will you guys give me a printout on that? Thank you. Uh, and, you know, I get into that. I mean, I do cover it. I made my Bohemian Grove films. Uh, uh, it's just that, you know, the general public, I've covered Skull and Bones. I mean, the globalists are not atheists. They want you to be an atheist because they're into the occult. And I appreciate your call. Lindsay, briefly, a minute and a half. Devil's Messiah, explain what that is. About when is the collapse going to take place? Uh, I, I basically asked my, I've asked my friend this many times, and 
I said, when? And he'd say, not the next three months. I'd say, when? Not the next three months. That's the reason I just said to you a few moments ago, it will not happen before the end of uh, December of this year. They intentionally are holding off the collapse until they can create massive debt in every nation, every city, every county, the United States of America, everywhere else. They're going to hold it off as long as they can. Even they themselves do not have a date yet. As to they want to further bankrupt us. But I'll give it to you at least by every three months increments. Okay, but, but, but listen, the caller's question was about the occultism of the elite. Well, I think you've covered that. Bohemian Grove, I've watched your DVD. You did a masterful job on that. And they positively are many of them. Not all of them, but many of them. I lived with them, I know. Many of them are involved in the occult. Yeah. The higher up you get, the more crazy it is. I tell you, growing up in high school and outside Dallas where I lived, it was like a movie. I mean, the richer the people were, I mean, I dated girls whose parents were billionaires and stuff, and I mean, it was Luciferian Central. <laughs> All right, folks, we'll be right back. Truth is definitely stranger than fiction. More calls straight ahead. By the way, it's Discovery Channel. I'm supposedly the main featured person in the uh, show. One hour special premiere. I'm reportedly in multiple episodes. I don't even know. I'm not bragging. I've, I've had in the last week three different national TV shows be offered to me. Not even, hey, fly out to L.A. or New York and, you know, we'll talk about it. It's like, boom, here's the deal. Here's the thing. And I've said no to all of them because I know it'll be a hit piece. I don't care how much money I get offered. We're not doing reality TV in here. We're not making it a big joke. But I did get a call by a big filmmaker I respect who wants to do an investigative show, and I may entertain that. I uh, talked to him today, so very exciting. But it shows how far we've come. There are good people out there in the system, out of the system, who don't like what's happening. And uh, so that uh, show, Discovery Channel, seeks to unlock the truth behind conspiracy theories with secrets of secret societies. And it premieres uh, 10 o'clock Eastern, 9 o'clock Central, 8 o'clock Mountain, 7 o'clock Pacific this Sunday. And I guess I'll be watching Discovery Channel so uh, there you go. Uh, I want to do five minutes of overdrive with Lindsey Williams. We can finish more of your calls, but I wanted to plug this because Lindsey never really talks about it. Uh, Lindsey's made like Countdown, the 2012 film. I forget the exact name. I know I watched it. Uh, he's come out with Secrets of the Elite, a bunch of film presentations with free CDs with it. The reason those are important is because you seem, you know, one made a year and a half ago, one made six months ago, and it's just almost all of it's happening. I wish it wasn't. Uh, you can go uh, to Prophecy Club website, uh, what is it, prophecyclub.com, and find his stuff there, great folks over there. Or you can uh, also call 888, what is it, 799-6111. I hope I'm going right from memory there because I kind of scribbled it. 888-799-6111. And there's also lindsaywilliams.net, an unofficial site, but he endorses it. It's a nice site that links through to that as well. So be sure and check out that new information and, and, and really have it all laid out to you nicely instead of, you know, me up here babbling about it. Uh, let's go to some more calls here. Uh, August in Missouri, you're on the air with Lindsay Williams. Uh, go ahead, welcome. Hey, how's it going, Alex? Good, go ahead with your question. Uh, okay, at the start of the collapse, okay, uh, of what's gonna happen, I got a couple questions, okay? Will gold and silver briefly drop? That's one. Will it just drop a little bit out of the fear and panic? And if I short the dollar, if I just want to do that, how do I make the money if the dollar becomes worth nothing? And when do I get paid on that? Sure. I don't think Lindsay should should sit here and give exact advice. But I know a big stock guy who made millions in doing one trade off what Lindsay said. Lindsay probably going to give you personal advice. But what did your elitist source, the oil company CEO, what did he tell you, Lindsay, um, uh, that key info about when we know the derivatives are going to go belly up? Okay. I saved the best to last, and I'm going to say it slowly instead of talk as fast as I normally do. So please bear with me because this is a bombshell. This was only a few days ago, and I wrote it down word for word as it was said. The Federal Reserve, there was a member of the Federal Reserve that just after Bernanke made his statement, he came out and said, the recent Fed action will not help. Well, I asked my friend about it, and he said, Chaplin, without, lick now I'm quoting this verbatim, he said, without liquid liquidity, the banking system and derivative market will freeze up. Did you hear this? And I said, liquidity, try to explain. He said, there must be billions of new money must be pumped into the market continually. And he said, if not, 
it will freeze up. I said, what do you mean by freeze up? He said, frozen loans, frozen savings, frozen bank account. He said, we may have, are you catching this? I'm quoting him verbally. Well, unfortunately, we'll have to get to it after the break, Lindsay. resistance the best there is that doesn't mean i got a big ego either people misunderstand sometimes that i'm aggressive uh and kind of uh ogre like when it comes to fighting tyranny that that's not it that's not arrogance that is desperation uh understand that uh, we're talking to august in missouri um look, look boil it down Lindsay. what are they saying that when they quit this QE Unlimited, that's when it's going to go down? Or, I mean, when, what are the signs that, that, that the uh, QE is going to, uh, that the derivatives market's going to lock up and the world Im implode? I'll, I'll give it to you the best I can with two or three other statements here he gave to me just days ago. We may have seen all the signs we'll see. Did you catch that? Currency wars, latest Fed action, $40 billion models, mortgage-backed securities, Okay, here goes. That's the last few statements. The only possible sign left is interest rate rise. And then he said, we may, we may, didn't say would, but watch out whenever they say may. He said, we may wake up one morning and the system will be frozen. Folks, get out of cash. You positively must get out of Well, look at all the billionaires and George Soros getting completely out of trading and buying hordes of gold. That is the scariest sign yet. Let me read this. Uh, this is a financial market worldwide news. Uh, this is happened the day after the QE last month. Former Fed governor talks trash. Trash talks QE. The chairman has gone all in, Warsh said in a Friday morning interview, and then went on to basically say it wouldn't work. So that's what you asked your elitist friend. Uh, August uh, in Missouri, does that answer your question? It does. I just have a, a real quick one about this thing. You said all the FEMA camps. Now, I have a little bit of intel, too, from a societal club I belong to. And what, what they're trying to tell the upper-level members, which I'm one of them, they're trying to say that in December, as everything you said is correct, but they're trying to also say that in the middle of December, they want a reason to bring in martial law. And that's why I wrote you an email about how about an electrical grid breakdown that freezes all the banks up. There's a high probability all i know is if they think we're going to go along with it they're going to do it if we get the word out it may stop them thank you for the call uh, send me that email again at show tips at infowars right now and i'll try to find it we just get so many but keep sending it Lindsay, that was a pretty creepy call i talked to a lot of other people they even do it with the local rich people in towns that may be worth only you know 10 million they kind of get brought into a level as well to get them to go along with the system they're telling them get ready for total breakdown as well the police are being told this. It doesn't mean it's absolutely going to happen, but I've never seen, Lindsay, such preparations. You said earlier in the show, Alex, that there are good people both in and out of the elite. Now, this is proof by the mere fact that this one gentleman, whom you know, is still giving me information on the basis of what he's giving it to me, giving me so much. And almost every, every few days now getting an email of some type or some, there are people in and out both that are, you're exactly right, that are very concerned, Alex. Let's jam in one more. Megan in California, listening on KOMY, the sister station of uh, KSCO, we're also on 1340. Real fast, Megan. Yes, uh, thank you for taking my call. Um, Mr. Williams, um, I guess my basic question, I've heard, I had a lot of answers already given while you were talking. What is the plan for the U.S. citizens once the currency goes global? Um, how do they envision us living? And when you say get out of cash, how does one make transactions, like going to the store? And third, what, um, what happens to someone who has a small business And when you say get out of cash? Well, I mean, what he's saying is, you know, don't have it all in cash. You still need some to operate. Just make preparations for hyperinflation implosion. Uh, right, Lindsay? I, I kill it all in a new CD that is with my Secrets of the Elite DVD series. Listen to the CD first. It's an hour and 12 minutes long, and I basically tell you what they told me to do personally in order to spare my attendance, able to save my house. You must secure your assets. That was an expression they sure, used. Sure, ma'am. You, you must get out of all paper every way possible. If it's written on a piece of paper, it's worth the paper it's written on, and remember what their currency is. You must remember what I've said for over three and a half years since it was given to me by the man. Silver and gold. Lindsay, we're out of time. 
tonight, 7 o'clock, InfoWars Nightly News, 7 Central, PrisonPlanet.tv, and back this Sunday, 4 to 6.